everybody. Welcome to Directly to You. It's the 184th episode. I'm AJ, mm-hmm. a Fanatic 4. I'm joined by Parker, also a Fanatic 4. It's our podcast. We talk about Nintendo and whatnot. And, mm-hmm. you know, other stuff sometimes, like Marvel. On the podcast, on the, on the what is it? I don't know if we named that segment of the podcast. But anyway. <laughs> you the can Marvel support. Minute? I don't know. That's oh, what yeah, I've been Marvel. saying. But. Oh, wait. that's But that's we might get C&D for that. Mm, uh, yeah. Anyway, you can support all that nonsense <laughs> by going to YouTube.com slash Fanatics 4 or Twitch.tv slash Fanatics 4 and giving us $4.99. And if you're on Twitch specifically, you don't even got to be your $4.99. You can get it from Jeffy B. If you have an Amazon Prime account, which you can link to your Twitch account, you get a free subscription every month. You just go to twitch.tv slash Fanatics 4. You click the little subscription thing. You click the free Prime sub button. And you got to mm-hmm. do it every month because, I don't know, I guess that's how Jeff wants you to earn the $4.99. <laughs> Not that hard. But if you don't want to subscribe, you don't got to subscribe. Oh, I didn't even tell you what you get for the subscribe if you do subscribe. You get loads of badges. You get free switch keys. You get emotes from time to time. You get access to our supporters only Discord where you can listen to us record this show live and you can heckle me when I mess up the intro or <laughs> do whatever you want to do. You know, you can ask questions for tribute to the show or you could just hang out in the uh-huh. Discord and say yo, yo, yo and talk about video games and whatnot. And you can join the Discord for the free by just clicking the link in the description and you can still talk about all this stuff. And if you're a free member of the Discord, if you contribute to the Discord enough, you know, if you hang out and you know mm-hmm. chat enough, you'll become active enough of a role and you can listen to the podcast without being a paid subscriber. It's pretty neat. We play video that games is. here. You playing a video <laughs> game. <laughs> I am playing a video game. Yes. Um, yeah, man. No, it's yeah, playing. I mean, basically just Hades right now. Um, uh, I won't go too much into it or whatever, because I think like for anybody who's played before, it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, what's going on at this point. Um, But to recap last night while I was playing, I, eh, whatever, I'll get into it a little bit. Um, I picked the uh, fists or whatever, like, and I don't love that weapon, but like sometimes when you go to pick a weapon at the beginning, so there's like a bow and arrow and there's a spear and there's a sword and that kind of stuff. And there's these fists. Um, and sometimes some of them will, one of them will glow purple, which just means that like you get a little bit extra of the, like one of the currencies when you're playing the thing. So it kind of incentivizes trying out some different things. So I was like, well, whatever, I'll grab the fists, even though I don't really like them. Um, and then just like throughout the run, I started it wasn't going great for most of the time. And then about halfway through, I started getting things that were like just super OP and really good combinations that all worked together um, to where the, the third floor boss that I'd only ever beaten once before I had something where like, so normally you've got these um, casts. So it's like these little things that you shoot and um, they do a little bit of damage when they go in. It's like little diamond things. Um, you have three of them is the max you can have. And they do a little bit of damage and they go in or they have like effects or whatever. And then um, af- and then also like while they're in there, they, the enemy takes more damage from you. So like, that's pretty good. It's not like the best thing ever, but it's useful to stack it on top of things. But I got one upgrade, one boon, where if you don't pick them back up, they do damage every second to just enemies around them while they're just kind of out in the open and that is like the most powerful thing ever in the game because like there's one area where there were two strong guys that i was fighting and i was like really working on this one dude and trying to fight him and meanwhile my three casts are just sitting on the other side of the room where the other guy is and he's trying to shoot things from far away and i'm just like behind a wall and he's just like taking some damage throughout the thing. I didn't touch him a single time and he's like a pretty hard enemy and he just died throughout the thing, which is great. Um, So that like carried me all the way. I barely made it past that point before, carried me all the way through the last floor and to the final boss. And I like was about, I got through the final boss's first phase and like halfway through a second phase on my first try ever just because like I lucked out so much on all this stuff which is like great but at the same time it's like yeah it's going to be that much longer before I get back there because that's never happening again like that Mm. exact combination of things so it's like kind of incentivizing to go back but at the same time part of me is like I don't know that I really (laughs) want to because it's going to be it's going to be harder this time (laughs) so yeah that's the problem with roguelikes and like there i'm not gonna lie there's a part of me too that's like you know what 
I've seen the breadth of the game now. I mean, like, not really, but like, you know, I've seen the final boss and like, I've experienced it. Part of me is like, all right, I'm good to call it, even though I haven't beaten him. And I know some people that's like heresy. And for me, I don't know. There's a place in my mind where I'm just fine with that. So we'll see what happens. I'm sure that will happen. <laughs> There you go. I mean, honestly, I did that with Mario World when I was 10. I got to Bowser, fought him one time, and I was like, cool. That's the whole game. <laughs> and, then, and then that's it. So, yeah, all that to say, Hades is going well. It's it's a fun time. Um, but uh yeah, I also I haven't picked I haven't started playing it yet, and we'll talk about it a little bit more later. But Banjo kazooies out today, and I've nice. barely played that. I played a little bit on Game Pass sometime last year um i think i pretty much just played some of the things in the first world so mm. excited to dig into that yeah banjo is um, cool i like that game that game's better yeah. than mario 64 fighting i mean um, I, from the bit i've played like again mario 64 is more nostalgic to me and i was just saying that generally that wasn't even like a personal thing to you i was just yeah. saying no <laughs> i mean exactly like i i could definitely i could see that argument pretty easily um so eh. I think like, yeah, again, one of them being more, um, I don't know, like iconic or like changing mm -hmm. the industry or that kind of thing aside, just in terms of like, which would, if I, which would I recommend to somebody who'd never played either to like try out now? Pretty sure Banjo-Kazooie from the little bit that I've experienced. Mm -hmm. That's just me. It's cool. But, yeah. Good times. Very cool. Bird says. What about you? What you playing? <laughs> Um, I'm playing a few things. Mm -hmm. I'm playing Pokemon. I'm continuing my Nuzlocke. It's been traumatic. <laughs> um, I lost many Pokemon. Mm. Uh, the first, so the first like purge of my Pokemon mm -hmm. was a like three pronged attack. <laughs> it was like first sock. I think I was like trying to I think the sock just ran up to me. I don't even know if I could have caught it, but I was it wouldn't let me escape or something. Yeah. It killed my starter, Bev Boy, and Oof, everybody was mad yeah. at me about that. Um, so Bev Boy died. And then I had the freaking battle hop. Mm -hmm. And Hop killed Bev Boy too, which is um I keep forgetting Dracovish. It's Dracovish. Okay. Um, he killed Bev Boy too, and then like three of my other Pokemon, and then like a little bit after that i was like trying to catch a pokemon to like recoup <laughs> get my <laughs> get my numbers back up and this freaking jellicent killed like two more of my pokemon it was oh my goodness terrible because it yeah. wouldn't stay in the freaking pokeball yep it was so it was so garbage and then that jellicent proceeded to die <laughs> it's so messed up so right now i only got two i had two pokemon but there's like gift pokemon that i can get so like including okay. all of that stuff i'll be back at six or around six mm -hmm. um but i'm still trying to... and you're at gym number i'm on the seventh gym. okay seventh mm -hmm. gym yeah i just beat uh the rock man nice um, so like around about what level are your pokemon now like 40 something ish 40, like low 40s yeah Mm -hmm. well the ones that are that didn't die <laughs> yeah right are exactly like like low 40s the new yeah. ones are like 10 because mm -hmm, they're mm -hmm. gift pokemon <laughs> right, so i had yeah. to go and train them um but mm. what's your who's uh like who's carrying you right now uh who is carrying me right now i don't even remember what pokemon i have left to be honest <laughs> um I don't know. <laughs> Somebody in chat might know, but <laughs> but I don't remember who's carrying no. me because everybody died. It's a traumatic Oof. experience. That's rough. Um, but I am trying to get Pikachu. Um, mm -hmm. I just got Galarian Slowpoke. Nice. Um, I'm debating. I might get Cub Fu. I think Cub Fu, like doing the whole like Isle mm -hmm. of Armor expansion. Okay. Yeah. Like how does that play into Nuzlocke? And stuff? that's what I'm saying. Like, I, yeah. I mean, there's no like rules against it. It's right. In the yeah. game. I could mm -hmm. die during and that. And Nuzlocke's are invented but... rules anyway. So like exactly. Mm. Um. So like I could do it, but I don't know if I personally want to do right. that much. Like I'll probably just get the like an encounter from there. I'll probably mm -hmm. get the like Kanto starter that they let you pick, and then I'll just go about my my day yeah um because i don't want to like be op i just want to have enough pokemon to survive yeah. the, the rest of the game um 
So that's and what's the it. yeah, what's the end goal? Like, I mean, so in because there's there's some post game content kind mm -hmm. of in I'm Sword and Shield. It. I'm just so doing like the Pokemon League. That's okay, my gotcha. goal. My goal is to beat the Pokemon League before mm -hmm. Arceus. And if I don't do it, then oh well, that sucks. Yep. Um, but that's what I want to do. And so I can't remember. I think is Eternatus before the Pokemon League? Yes. Okay, gotcha. So that is, but fighting um sword bert and shield bert or whatever mm -hmm. that's after. is it after? That's after okay is that the only like main post game stuff or um there's some other stuff too it's like it all kind of it's pokemon and and the gyms go go haywire and you gotta go and help the gym oh leaders yeah take, yeah 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 take control mm -hmm. and then i think maybe one other thing yeah and then i the DLC. i pretty much like towards the end of the the story you know the story of that i was like all right i'm ready to be done with this and mm -hmm. so i just like beelined it to the end so i do not remember the sequence of events i do remember like you know a couple things that happened but in terms of like the order of operations nah um yeah. not too much but nice yep. glad yeah. it's going well so yeah hopefully i can do it <laughs> i'm now i believe in you it's just a, it, like playing the game like that is another example of why i think people are dumb <laughs> because that game is not easy unless right. you make it easy yeah and they make it easy to make it easy mm -hmm. but if you don't want it to be easy it doesn't have to be and you don't it, even have to like limit yeah. how you play it you mm -hmm. could just level up more pokemon yeah i mean that's honestly a lot of times that's what i do and that I don't know, like, I don't have a preferred way to play Pokemon games anymore. Um, and I wish that I just did because I, I feel like I kind of try to beat the story stuff, but also catch them all and also level them all up kind of evenly. And that kind of, or, okay, what I was doing is Hold Shining on, Pearl. I have to insult Mega Man real quick. You can't say nothing <laughs> about the game being easy because you use Toxic on Ivysaur. Okay, carry on. <laughs> there it is. Um, like so i think at, when i was playing shining pearl my goal was just to like i don't know l level up all the pokemon as i go to like fill out the pokedex but then eventually i'd end up being like all right well now i've leveled up my uh, i don't know what, what i even have on my team i legitimately don't remember or like i don't know like i get empoleon now you probably but then now he's my strongest and i switch the same him out. team as everybody yeah. else i mean probably so like you can I only had... catch 12 pokemon in that video game <laughs> so like empoleon luxray uh star raptor like i have all three of those but then the way that i was playing it which is just dumb like i need to not do this um was then i'd like trade them out of my team or have one of them on my team but then have the rest of the team be like a level 22 bunnery that i'm That's trying to evolve I, and like, stuff like for most of the video game but yeah because that game is garbage and paced poorly <laughs> that doesn't work you have to yeah. like power yeah. level in that yeah. game because the end of the game is like freaking yep. ridiculous <laughs> the thing that sucks with like i, I don't know it, i guess it doesn't suck but like in terms of um just in general with pokemon like if you have a team that you want to have it's hang on i need i need to think about this before i say these words i like because i'm not sure exactly what i think i'm i'm gonna think back to ash and mm -hmm. on his team he actually does like you know he catches some pokemon he has that team and then he catches something else replaces it out of his team and has a better team going forward and that kind of thing so like that you know that is the way that it works but it does kind of i don't know something about that kind of feels like it sucks it's like man i've had this nidoran you know like in gen one or whatever like i've had a nidoran since route technically that's route like 32 or 36 i don't know whatever that is but like since you know right at the beginning and now i'm just gonna like now it's a nido king but i'm just gonna switch it out because something else is stronger you know what i mean like something about that feels like you emotionally don't to, you don't i mean you don't have to, to for it. sure and it's like but... it's like the sort of thing that like you switch it out but because of the way that the game works eventually that pokemon is going to be weaker so then it's like, yeah. okay, well, I'll bring this out and I'll train it up again. And then, you know, mm -hmm. you get to use more Pokemon. Yeah. Like if you're playing a Pokemon game and you legitimately only like six of the Pokemon, you probably mm -hmm. don't like Pokemon. Though. <laughs> so 
<laughs> like there is more uh-huh. Pokemon that you could be like incorporating on your teams and stuff like that, that I'm sure yep. a lot of people want to, like they're mm-hmm. making these decisions between, do I want this Pokemon or this Pokemon? Well, I already have a fire type, so I can't have yeah. this Pokemon. You can because you can take that fire <laughs> Pokemon out, put it on the PC, uh-huh. do whatever gym or, or trainers or routes or towns, and then swap yep. them again and then do it like that. And I am curious how Legends Arceus is going to feel in that regard, because I, I do think I'm in a weird middle ground of like not competitive Pokemon player at all on that side. And I I mean, like I know some things about it, but like definitely that's that's not where I sit. But I'm also not 10 anymore or seven anymore. And like I I miss the times when I was seven and just had a sand slash on my team because I thought sand slash was cool mm. and you know that kind of thing. And it was like but I was that's making the, the stuff game that you should do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly. I mean, then what that's you do. and so, but it's like, but now because I know these other things, like part of my brain is like, but I shouldn't have sand slash because he doesn't, you know, whatever, whatever. Like, see, the thing for up me those kinds of things is like I actively discourage that. Like, I understand <laughs> competitive battling. Mm-hmm. I get it to like it's a flaw to a flawed degree to the yeah. to the point that i hate it <laughs> i absolutely hate competitive pokemon battling because it is so simple like yeah. it's so simple and that becomes boring and uninteresting yeah um and because of how simple it is there's really 12 viable pokemon and sword and shield right. because of dynamaxing there's 40 viable pokemon but really <laughs> there's 12 viable pokemon um and that's boring. Like, I just want to use the Pokemon that I think looks cool. Like, I don't yeah. care about all of the crap. Um, and I think that's what I'm I'm planning on leaning into more is just like you doing Pokedex stuff as just like the B plot, you know, like subsequent things if I want to do it. But like, you know, play play Ash Ketchum, don't play red, pretty much. Mm-hmm. You know, where I'm or don't don't play Go, I guess more specifically in the um Pokemon journeys. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, context. So because yeah, I like I think there's just there are Pokemon that are just more fun and just cooler. And like I'm at whatever point I run into a cooler Pokemon, I'm happy to switch that out for my, you know, Radicate or whatever. Um, I mean, like get rid of Radicate. <laughs> um, but I mean, I guess the nice thing about the fact that you can overlevel stuff is that ultimately everything can become viable within, you know, at least your the, playthrough. the yeah. your playthrough purposes because you can just level it up. And like, even if, you know, I remember at some point um, in college, this other kid and I, I didn't know about emulators and a friend showed me and this other kid um, emulators and Pokemon emulators stuff. And so we emul- both of us were playing through I think I was playing silver and he was playing gold or the other way around. I don't remember. Um, and we were like, all right, we're going to have a battle in one week. And so that was the plan. We were you know, we're in a couple days or something like that. And he leveled his team up to like level hundred. Cause you know, you can fast forward stuff or whatever. And I leveled mine up to like, yeah, I don't know. Like my top one was 95, but then the other ones were like 80 something or whatever. And I was like, all right, well he's level hundred. And I, know that i know more than him but at the same time like his are higher level and stuff and it was it was really sad because like i i watched him as he was training and he had a typhlosion and like i mean you know when you can you can but he was like using flamethrower on gravelers and stuff not necessarily knowing that like even though it says not very effective, just thinking like I'm so much stronger that it's not even going to matter. Mm. Um, so pretty much like I steamrolled his whole team with just like a Magneton or something um, just because I knew what literally just what super effective moves were and stab moves and stuff, which is like very basic knowledge of kind of knowing some stuff. Mm. Um, but all that to say, that was, a, I don't, I he don't remember the, the point. Wrong math. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that said, he still was able to do that. You know, he beat red just mm. by just being by real strong and stuff. Yeah. And if that's fun, cool, you know, and that's it. So like, it's, it's nice that that's an option. Um, even though, you know, it's all a big old complicated mess. Um, yeah, yeah. It's nice that that's there for when you need it. <laughs> well, I mean, since we're already on the Pokemon topic, we should just, let's do it. The other Pokemon stuff. <laughs> let's talk about it. Um, yeah. So Pokemon um, legend Arceus got, data mined or leaked and uh, both uh, all of the above Mm -hmm. and we don't uh, care about any of that because we didn't look at it 
<laughs> we're not talking about that here, but yeah. we are going to talk about the fact that it's using the new online networking library situation for better online. Yep. Asterisk. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like, I don't know why this matters. <laughs> like, I like, I haven't seen any um, noticeable improvement with any of the games that we know mm-hmm. use it, you know? Like yeah. the people that I played Monster Hunter Rise with were the same people that I played Smash Brothers with and their internet is fine on that video game too, you know? Yeah. Like, so I don't, and it, as far as what we know for sure, the only online uh, engagement to be had in Arceus is trading. So yeah. what do we even need good online for? Yeah. I mean, I guess it could be as simple as it's, that's just how they needed something, you know, some way to do trading. And so this is just a new one. There's doing everything on the new one. So like, that's a boring answer, but like, it could be as simple as literally just like, all right, everything's going to use the new online starting for sure. For sure. You know, I just mean, um, I don't understand why this is like he- a headliner on, on sites, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, right. I mean, I feel like, I mean, cause I'm very much trying to avoid um, spoilers or anything mm-hmm. like that well at least like you know this kind of like i'm not super sensitive about spoilers but like leak spoilers is definitely more than if if it's like there's a new story trailer for this game and it kind of spoils some stuff a little bit like that's different mm-hmm. um but yeah in this case i i do wonder if we did know what way it was using it that would also if that would, that would have been the article instead that matters yeah Nintendo not. Switch Online plus Pokemon is so much angry. That's a fact. That's true. People want to hate both of those things. Yeah. So, yeah, I get it. Yeah. I mean, I would still love to see. Yeah. If I don't know, there did they say that there that this one in the end it's gone back between or gone between being one player and two player at various points it's still on the website. Up is to it still say two, two player? Okay. Yeah. Still says up to two players. My hope for that is, and I is um, just like Pokemon Stadium kind of thing, you know, um, just like local battling or whatever. That would be cool. I mean, if it's online, then it won't be <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, but that's what but, I'm saying. It's like well, it, like the Pokemon could, Stadium equivalent of like they give you rental teams or whatever. And yeah, battle with those. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's what I assumed was going to be the case, like Pokemon yeah. Stadium, Pokemon Coliseum, mm-hmm. Gale of Darkness situation. Um, but I don't know. I couldn't know, yeah. but I'm not going to look at it. <laughs> Speaking of that, my Arceus downloaded, so I got that icon to oh. look at for the next week. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. I thought you meant like the the game is on. And I was like, how? Did no, play it? Because I because <laughs> I pre uh, pre yeah, ordered yeah. it. And then it just started downloading when I uh, turned my switch on. So Good stuff. On my switch, but I can't touch it. You know? Yeah. I realized, so I'm not going to be on the podcast next week, um, but we'll have a guest on, mm-hmm. which if you listened to the, the Nintendo Noise podcast, you know that it's Pete. So, but I, I'm not going to tell you who it is. Couldn't be Pete. Um, in any case, but I realized my parents are going to be in town while this game comes out and I'll, I, I won't get to play, play it very much. Right. and that's actually pretty fine no i'll just have to wait two days and i get to see my parents which i only get to do like one time a year so you know what it it works out <laughs> but, yeah man i'm i'm excited to see how this all pans out you know um it was interesting too i saw some comments apparently i mean i don't know about it, apparently um but uh nate from you know direct feed games nate the hate all that um posted something about like some cryptic like he was like alluding to monolith the, yeah exactly i don't know i mean no hate on him uh, yeah no point intended but i don't know how much i trust that dude <laughs> yeah <laughs> in, in terms of like his his information mm-hmm. um i but, thought even monolith stuff aside i was mm-hmm. curious like the ver the phrasing was like the conversation's gonna shift a little bit about you know the look or something i was like can it that much you know what i mean like i don't know like maybe but i still if 
I, the way that I could see it shift for the better is if the game runs well in the open world and people stop focusing on textures and start focusing on like direction, art direction and design, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. In which case, like I still am of the opinion that it's like, it's pretty nice. Yes. Um, but, you know, we've talked about that before and we'll see what, <laughs> we'll see. what it ends up being. Um, but for me, I mean, as long as, you know, like as long as those things are the case, again, I'm I'm fine with the just direction in general. So I'm I'm excited about being in this world. Mm-hmm. So me, I've said it before. I I would be I'd be more disappointed if the game looks like what the people that are complaining about Pokemon, mm-hmm. like the graphics, if it ends up looking like what they want it to look like, I right. would yes. be disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> I would much rather they double down on artistic vision yeah. over just make it look real. Yeah. Because that's uninteresting. And it's jarring for a video game about a electric mouse. Yeah. I mean, I think for me, you know, like if it was literally just this, but there was just more blades of grass or that, or like trees, something, something, something or whatever, like then yeah. I feel like that would, that would satisfy whatever that part is mm-hmm. while keeping the core of what it is. Cause yeah, I also very much don't want, um, I should try to remember what that one game was called that was at E3 that was like, this is what Pokemon should be like or whatever. Um, the uh the the dokev or whatever it's called you talk maybe about yeah the one the, the like freaking the city the one game where that's she's... like what the heck is going on <laughs> that's in this the video one game? Yeah, yeah yeah it's like dokev i think it's called. Uh, yeah so that yeah I, you know I, I don't i don't want that particularly so yeah no i don't i don't care and i i would be like i mean higher texture i mean higher quality textures and mm-hmm. all that stuff too. It's nice, but I would be just as <laughs> indifferent about that art style as I am about the current one. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that this art style is actively uninteresting, not because it's the, like doesn't look visually stimulating or anything like that, mm-hmm. but just because it's like super co- like cookie cutter anime video game. Right. That's not yeah. trying to like double down on being an anime video game. Uh-huh. It's like we're anime kind of, but not really, <laughs> you know? Yep. Um, yeah, the I thing that I'm interested in seeing going forward with open world games and specific, like, I mean, obviously I love Breath of the Water. I love Zelda, but it, it, Zelda is more a culprit of this than maybe any other games of like having very distinct uh, ecosystems and stuff like that, where it's like, this is the lava area. And like this mm-hmm. game very much does that and, you know, feels as artificial as ever kind of, mm-hmm. um, I mean, it, you know, nice still to see a snowy area and that that'll be fun and to see a desert area. Cool. But I do wonder what's like the next step forward creatively for that kind of thing. Um, that's, you know, where areas feel different from each other while not just being like Feeling artificial where it's like, we yeah. gotta have a water level. We have yeah. to. Otherwise, it's not an open world video game. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it feels kind of like, think you know, they think about areas in these kind of games the same way they think about like Pokemon types, where it's like, mm-hmm. we got a fire type, water type, grass type, right. you know, like fill in all these slots of these things. Um, and even then, I, I don't even think that because of the way that Pokemon work, they don't have to think of it like that. Like yeah. A fire type Pokemon doesn't have to be from a volcano. You know? Right. Yeah. Um, but we'll or does see. it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, fire type Pokemon don't have to be from volcanoes. That's true. But Pokemon did sell a lot in 2021. That's also that's, true. That's that's a you know, that's that is a good point. That's a really good point. Now let's talk about that. Um, yeah. So according NPD, which again, physical games in America, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. specific. So you know, kind of specific, but pretty indicative still of overall. overall. Um, and mm-hmm. also, especially considering that like it's not including digital and digital's bigger than it ever has been right probably pretty indicative but so npd specifically um 2021 dollar sales of pokemon franchises uh pokemon franchises physical software reached its highest annual total since 2000 which again that's crazy 2000 was only physical so it could be that it was yeah, just you know, with the physical data that we have now yeah. it met everything that was possible back then everything that we know i mean like all the extra stuff on top of that just american uh 
dollar sales in terms of digital would yeah. dwarf that because like we're still in the like not like we probably should be as much if not more in the like <laughs> covid era as we were before where the yeah, like, right. games were like lower mm -hmm. um but we're still enough in that era and people still are comfortable enough with buying digital games that yep. the digital numbers are nothing to scoff at anymore. Yeah. Like that's gotta be at least like 40% of their sales. For sure. So I don't know, like those numbers are probably crazy. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, and it speaks to, I think, so I was, we were talking about this on the, um, on Nintendo noise, mm -hmm. but just how, um, how many different genres of Pokemon games are being represented at the same time is like more different than it ever has been. Where like to some degree in the past, a Pokemon game would kind of usurp the last one, you know, essentially where it's like, all right, well, I got gen seven. Like now I don't need to get gen six. I mean, a lot of people want to have every generation that are playing them. So that's like a good thing for sure. Mm -hmm. But basically, you know, there's not, as much diversity where somebody might just not care about the main main formula but would enjoy let's go or would enjoy you know sword and shield or would enjoy um legend arceus or something like that so or pokemon snap even you know so like um that the fact that like this is the year that like the most pokemon games that are popular have ever probably been sold at the same time it's just like got a cumulative thing going on so yeah, I, mean, I will be interested I, to see I pokemon think more than yeah. that is just because there's more like the opposite of that like there's just more crossover like yeah right it's not like people like the person that will buy pokemon snap wouldn't buy brilliant diamond as mm -hmm. you know like the only game that i could think of that that or games that that might happen is like pokemon snap and then like let's yeah. go mm -hmm. but i don't know many people personally that bought let's go and then didn't at least buy like sword yeah you know Cause like let's go is like the game that's like, I don't really know if I'm going to like, if I'm into Pokemon, I don't really understand yeah. Pokemon. This is my first Pokemon game, but then you play that and it's like, Oh, okay. I understand Pokemon now. And then yep. you buy the next game and then, you know, you're, you're, I guess that's you're a dentist. better way of saying it is like, there's multiple <laughs> entry points more right. so than like pillars. Yeah. Or where it's just yeah, like, yeah. you have one thing to buy, but here mm -hmm. you have multiple things to buy. And yep. then once you buy one, you're probably going to buy another one. <laughs> like, even if you don't buy all of them. Mm -hmm. I could see of all of the things going forward, probably Legends Arceus will be the most standalone-ish one uh, that like I could see somebody who's like, man, I fell off a of Pokemon completely or like I've never enjoyed a Pokemon game anytime I tried it or whatever. Um, and then maybe could be enticed to play Legends Arceus. Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe, maybe not. I mean, it'll be interesting to see how the like reviews come out and all that kind of stuff. But I do wonder if to some degree, the potential there was already a little bit used up through Sword and Shield. Because I think that was like with the wild area, the world Pokemon and stuff like that. I do remember a lot of people saying like, all right, let's give it a try. And then that game, you know, didn't change as much yeah. in, in the traditional formula to be able to win those people over to where now like, they wouldn't try a new game that maybe would have fit them better. But also it's like, that's a pretty small minority in the grand scheme of like Pokemon fans at large. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually, oh, so <laughs> I was talking to, and it, this is just very interesting to me to like understand how different other people's perspectives are, or like understandings are of things that are outside of our circle, especially. Mm -hmm. um, I was talking to a coworker who, uh, was like, yeah, you know, I love Pokemon and stuff. And he's like, yeah, Pokemon's the only, only games I've ever played is Pokemon games. Um, and then he said something to where I realized that he plays them on an emulator on his phone. And that's the only way he pretty much plays them. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was telling him about Legends Arceus coming out and he's like, can you, can you play that on your phone? And I was like, mm, no, I mean, <laughs> Uh, and I, I used the word pirate to make it just like a little shady, like to, you know, to impress upon him, like, you probably shouldn't be doing that, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, but I was like, yeah, I mean, you know, so you can pirate some of the older games for sure. But um, I don't think anybody's made an emulator for Switch for phones. I don't think, you know, basically, even if a phone was stronger than a Switch, 
it, to emulate something, you have to be way stronger than the thing that you're trying to emulate. So like, even then, you know, that's not a thing. Um, so then I was like, yeah, so you'd have to buy a Nintendo switch. And he was like, what's that? And I happened to have mine. I was like, it's this thing. And I told him about it. Um, and again, this is where like, just realizing how d- disconnected we are from other people. And it's like the whole concept. I, sent him the like first look trailer that we saw in back in October, 2016, just cause I still feel like that's kind of the best full representation of like everything the switch is maybe mm-hmm. is that trailer. Um, but I sent that and he, I was like, yeah, it's like 300 bucks. He was like, okay, wow. So, and then are the games free or I was like, this is so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> like, See, but that's no, the, like I, I, I get that. I get yeah, it. yeah. And that's why every just, time, I don't think I have about a that. A lot at of all. friends that are like in that space mm-hmm. that like they they they'll play games, but they're not trying to spend that much money on games. Yeah, that's why I'm always. I mean, this is like kind of a peek at the future topic, but mm-hmm. like now, whenever somebody that is not a gamer or whatever mm-hmm. asks me what console should they buy, it's an Xbox. Free. Yeah, right. Three, it is an Xbox because that is the one console that it gets the closest to that. Okay, I spent yep. four hundred dollars on this thing. I don't want to mm-hmm. spend more on it, so it's like, all yeah. right, here's this four hundred dollar box, mm-hmm. and then you get Netflix for it. You know, right. <laughs> like that's easy to explain to people. Where it's it like, is. yeah, you spend two thousand dollars on your on your four K TV. You know, mm-hmm. now you spend fifteen, seventeen, twenty dollars a month on the subscription services yep. for it, and that's easy to you know, get through to people because yeah. it's one to one with what they already do. Whereas, and then like, like I spend... know it's true. Cause I had to explain to him, you know, like I was like, there are, and I, I sent him a Bob video of like the best free games in 2021. I was like, there are free games. There are some pretty good ones. Um, and I also was like, yeah, I, I, I definitely get it. Cause like, I wouldn't spend barely, I don't think any money on a game on a mobile game, just because like, I just don't, I don't know, it, you know, that's, but these games are typically like built very different from those and like much more intentionally or whatever so there's something we said for like you know though like experiences being better and blah 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 that kind of thing um but also like definitely get it but like had to you know the whole thing of like well there are some games that are 60 dollars, and some i just bought 10 games for 40 dollars total a couple weeks ago so like i don't know what to tell you <laughs> but no mm. totally game pass is like the most efficient way to narrow that down and yeah makes sense and especially whenever game pass um i think like the new some newer smart tvs coming out even this year i'm pretty sure are going to come with game pass on them and with um geforce now or something like that Mm -hmm. and if so like that honestly will like be such like open such a world to a ton of people i feel like that Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like not having to do the console thing in a different way than like Stadia kind of just say Stadia yeah. tried to, you know, <laughs> have his cake and eat it too. Right. We, yeah. We want to make you think that we're a subscription <laughs> service, but also we still want the $60 per year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also, Mark said the man is going to be open to a whole new world of rooftop parties. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Yes. That is the one thing I have still yet oh, to have a rooftop I didn't even, party. See, that's the thing. I didn't even put like put two and two together. Uh-huh. That I could have had the rooftop party when I was in Brooklyn with Bob, uh-huh. but nobody played the Switch. Oh, on man. On the rooftop. <laughs> We're eating right. pizza. I'm coming to New whatnot. York. Let's do it. <laughs> Yo, we got to do it. We got to have the rooftop party. Uh, Bob, get ready. That's crazy. I didn't yeah. even I didn't even realize that, that nobody played their <laughs> Switch on the, that, on, on the rooftop. We were too worried about trying to get the stupid light to turn on. Mm-hmm. And then the and light we turned should... on when we were walking away. <laughs> I just get a ladder. Just go hang out on my roof. I mean, it's I'm just in a regular old suburban house and stuff. But like, you know, just sit on the roof, same, pull out Switch for fun. Same, it's same. not. It's very much not. But yeah, so... We'll see. I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, that was just interesting, but especially the Pokemon stuff. Like that's, um, I'm curious to see how, what the sales are of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I mean, again, physical only was the third best selling title of December, well, of December. Um, and ranking first on Nintendo platforms for both December as well as 2021. Oh, I missed that part last time I read this. Mm-hmm. Which makes sense. That's when most yeah. games are sold. I mean, it's Pokemon. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Wow, yeah. That would be so interesting to see numbers next year. I mean, yeah, I guess last year was a decent amount of, like, 
kind of more niche things we and the, the, like the we get the, i mean pretty soon yeah it's the i think like this I don't know, let's find out um it's like this 7th of february or something like that typically or you might even hear a little bit depending on how much it's if it sells a lot you might hear a little bit about arceus that's true but ooh, that's only interesting it sells a lot. yeah right yeah which yeah. is like not like it's not unprecedented there's like pokemon games sword and shield sold in that ballpark of like it's mm-hmm. sold four million copies in the first 48 hours or whatever yep february 3rd by the way so um it'll be the podcast yeah two weeks away mm-hmm. pretty much um but yeah you're right sometimes they'll say that kind of stuff they definitely seem like they're saying that stuff less and less as fewer like milestones are being yeah it's less you know impressive. like they're, exactly they're yeah. not out doing i think still it's probably i think it's still smash that sold the most in 48 hours it was like oh yeah point something million well uh, animal crossing probably oh yeah yeah yeah. animal crossing animal crossing yeah but they didn't say 48 hours they said like the first 11 days that's I true think. yeah yeah they did um which i mean you know it, probably we can assume it was it ended up being more in 48 hours but yeah maybe not mm, we'll see yeah well now we'll see we we could have known we if they told us different actively <laughs> see <laughs> yeah, exactly uh so there it is yeah all right so but speaking of the big thing speaking of xbox um microsoft bought yes, activision they and did. this is a, just a big old thing they buy up all the ip <laughs> dude we're gonna run out of ip no no one like ever has ideas for new ones and that's a problem it's crazy so. that they're buying up all the ip i, I, IP I mean for the rest of us So one of the things that I'm curious about with this too, for us to touch on whenever we get to it is like, um, I mean, as people have talked about, I think Xbox did tweet out something today. I I glanced at it, but need to look at it closer where they talked about like something, 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 all the things coming to um, Sony are still going to come to Sony and, and all that. Um, But you know, what does this mean for, for Nintendo? Does it mean I don't know. Well, let's just talk about all the different things. Yeah, I don't think, as far as Nintendo is concerned, I don't think that this affects them at all because Microsoft is not trying to be Nintendo or Sony. Yeah. They are trying to do a very different thing. Yeah, like no, for sure. They are like a a software company first, (laughs) and they're becoming a subscription company. You know, they don't care Mm -hmm. about selling their box. They yep. do not. So if they think that their software or their subscription will flourish on other platforms, it will be on those other platforms. And so that's honestly what I was kind of getting at is is the is that that like I honestly think with as I mean we weren't not getting Activision games again. Here's a, a preface. I don't think this that thing. we'll get more Activision. Games. I I wonder if we do. Is all I'm saying. Except I, for I think that we might see. The thing is, like, when I say I don't think we'll get more, I don't think uh-huh. we'll get more of the ones that we already don't get. Yeah. Right. Like I don't know if Microsoft is going to be the one to be like, you know what? Let's put Call of Duty on. Screen. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um. But I can see. Microsoft being like, you know, we don't use enough spot. Yes. You know, right. like that, that sort of situation. That's what I kind of maybe not because you know <laughs> what? They don't use enough banjo. So yeah. like, I don't know, maybe this is like part of what they needed for like to change that. Cause like mm-hmm. buying these studios doesn't even just mean IP. It means more manpower. So they can be like, yo, Toys yeah. for Bob, make the next banjo <laughs> game, you know, like that sort of situation. I'd also, I mean, it could be, and and based on Bethesda's stuff, seems like it might be that like Activision outside of like obviously it'll have better um, company structure stuff and better workplace, all those kinds of things, which is like best case scenario in that case that like mm. people get to stay at their jobs, but their jobs become a lot, you know, like no sexual harassment and stuff. That's pretty good. I don't um, know about no, I mean but less, less, <laughs> less is the you know. At, at more, minimum uh, better policed uh yeah, hopefully there you go that's that's the hope um so but all that to say like uh it could be that outside of good old bobby boy leaving next year in freaking 2023 in tw- yeah exactly that kind of activision ends up 
maybe just being their own thing, you know, like staying the same and all that. Um, so yeah, maybe it doesn't have as much impact as, as what I'm thinking that it could, but it definitely seems like as, um, you know, as uh, Microsoft is thinking about Xbox and again, like you said, with subscription services and stuff, we're like, there's Microsoft office is on Mac. Like you can just get it on Mac because it's like, you know, they know this is the best suite of office products. Might as well sell, sell on a competitor because like we still get that money. <laughs> so, mm-hmm, um, so at some point it seems like when they realize they're, like you said, they're not trying to sell their box first and foremost, that they're like, you know, when you have a lot of money, you can pay for other people to make you money. And that's not a bad idea. And so now they're just doing a bunch of that. So like costs a lot of money to buy all these studios, but then ultimately they're going to be, be the ones recouping from that. So like money. Yeah. Like, yeah. What there's maybe right now, 10 mm-hmm. being, being generous, maybe 10, 15 million Xbox series mm-hmm. consoles out in the wild. Why do that when you can access <laughs> 150 million consoles with playstation 5s and switches included in that like yeah and i mean it is nice because like now for them they like with starfield you know they get to kind of pick and choose what are the prestige pieces that are going to define xbox as a brand Mm -hmm. um and what are the ones that are just going to make the money because like they're just going to make the money by putting them places and stuff like that you know they can make a lot of really strategic moves without having to consult other parties um mm-hmm. and just kind of just do it themselves uh, and that, that's... that also is a, a big reason for why hopefully the culture and like the the the, the business practices of activision are mm-hmm. able to change now because when you're a third-party publisher you don't have the like yeah well if this game's really good people will buy our console you know mm-hmm. yeah uh, but right. now they do so mm-hmm. they they don't have to do the whole like man we need to have call of duty on our investor sheet this this year we got to do it we yeah. can't not have a call of duty but they can do that now if they're like yeah but like if we don't this year we can have a better call of duty that people like more and that will sell more because of it yeah uh, or i mean honestly other- with all this stuff like it's I feel like it's generally just like, it's, it, maybe it's not like a purely good thing because it's not, but it's definitely a more than, more than neutral good thing. I just don't, I disagree. I don't know what's bad about this. I genuinely, I mean, don't. I think it, the only thing that I, that I could say is that like people, that people would say at least is like, Bobby Kodak gets a big old payout, but A, he was going to get gonna one get anyway, anyway, or he yeah. was going to stay. And yeah, that's either he was going to stay and he was going to continue to get a hundred million dollar bonuses every year, yeah, or right. this happens and that that that's like expedited. Like, oh, okay, yeah. he got two years worth of bonuses. That sucks, but yeah. at least he's going, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and I think that the, the one thing that was brought and up- no one will, yeah. The one, one thing that was brought up to me about acquisitions uh, that somebody said in Twitch chat, I think it was Trev, um, that was talking about the jobs that may be lost. Um, mm, and in this yeah. case, that was happening anyway. <laughs> because Activision's yeah, was, like, I, yo, record, record sales, man. We made billions more dollars this year. Now, mm, who wants to get laid people. off? <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, yeah. They are going to do that anyway. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't think that like there, there might be like, uh, one mass layoff, which sucks, but yeah. I think moving forward, there will be less layoffs. I mean, and it sounds like, I mean, I don't know, but X that, um, Microsoft is the kind of company that's, that might be like, Hey, you're leaving, but like, if you can, you can find another position within here, you within know, Microsoft. that kind of a thing. Like that's mm-hmm. obviously that's definitely not the case at all corporations or whatever, but like corporations, the size of Microsoft often seem like they have that kind of a also, policy in place. It's like they're in the business of goodwill right now. It's very yes, clear that right. they, they want people's goodwill. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if they took that hit and just kept everybody on to not have to do that press release. Yeah. Right. I mean, because we haven't seen anything like that for Bethesda. Hey, yeah, exactly. Mark just said the same thing. Doesn't mean this didn't happen, but you didn't hear much of a Bethesda Zenimax people getting laid off. Right. Exactly what I was about to say. Like, yeah, we just haven't heard about one. You know, and like, it could be that they were better at streamlining their teams anyway or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, you know, and well, 
arguably Activision has been laying off more people. So they're probably a little more slim than Bethesda was anyway or something. Yeah. Mm. So it'll, it'll be interesting how this all shakes out, but I'm, I am curious, I, you know, and going, I'm kind of going back on my word too, of um, basically like call of duty wasn't coming to switch, but a lot of it, like overwatch Diablo mm -hmm. Spyro crash, Tony Hawk, like, a decent amount of a decent amount of stuff was coming to switch mm. um and i don't expect those things like the things that performed well i expect them to still continue to come over mm. um for those reasons because i i don't know that any of those are specifically prestige piece would be the prestige yeah. piece kind of thing like i think that it's yeah. going to be similar to like bethesda's yeah. line of logic right now that we know of where mm -hmm. it's like the new stuff the star fields that has never had a history anywhere is going to be an xbox thing yeah but i don't think that they're going to just make elder scrolls an xbox thing i don't think they're going to make the next doom just an xbox thing yeah um and in this case there's no way i mean they've already said as much as far as call of duty is concerned that it's not going to just be an xbox thing yep um and they yeah what was that i saw do, 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 do. i wanted to find that tweet to read it but i can't see where it is so never mind carry on <laughs> um but yeah no i i think that this this is good um mm -hmm. and i think things like this barring them happening from companies with the intent to gatekeep the like the products and all that other stuff um is a good thing because yeah. a lot of the time, like with Activision, like with companies like EA, they just rest on their laurels. They're like, mm -hmm. all right, man, we got this billion dollar franchise. Let's just keep doing the same thing over and over again. But when stuff like this happens, there's new people that get to have hands on and they're like, oh man, you know, they're like excited about this yeah, new game right. that they get to play with now. And then everybody else that is their competitors, like shoot. <laughs> what are we going to do and then they have to make something that's as good or better to compete and yeah. that is good for us yep um mark found the tweet i was looking at xbox's twitter and it was in it was phil spencer so thanks mark um where he tweeted had good calls this week with leaders at sony i confirmed our intent to honor all existing agreements upon acquisition of activision blizzard and our desire to keep call of duty on playstation sony is an important part of our industry and we value our relationship that's a fact yeah so there you go you know in the business of goodwill <laughs> <laughs> yep yeah i mean that's and honestly like there's i don't know i'm not as familiar with with activisions uh, all there i just looked up like all of the ips that they own and stuff actually there's a question we can just pull that mm -hmm. from later um from the q a um, both thrill house 198x and brandon wilson asked any old Activision slash Blizzard IP or games you want to see come back? Um, and here, I'll put it in the chat down here too, this list in case anybody else wants um, to look at the list. Off the top of my head, the the main thing that I would want to see like come back, come back, it's already kind of come back, is Spyro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, that's yeah, the only sure. like, Activision thing that I can think of that I care about. Yep. Um, which i mean i wouldn't be well yeah i don't know after having a new crash like having a new spyro seems like maybe that was never gonna happen under their watch or something but like it seems like might have pretty easy you know, you like know crash, or not easy but crash like four obvious. came out after they did the remake yep. of those games yeah <laughs> so i could see it but maybe with microsoft it would be a better thing yeah because even thing, with like crash 4 mm -hmm. i know people like that game um but yeah i think that it was not it wasn't made with the same uh like reverence that like a mario game is made with it was still mm -hmm. very much so intended to be a smaller thing hence why they charge less you know like yeah. it's not 40 dollars because they're like yo we want to do you a solid <laughs> it's like it's 40 dollars because this game was cheap for us to make and we want to make <laughs> you feel like we're doing you a solid you yeah know? right yeah honestly i mean looking looking at their ip2 the thing i was gonna bring this up with is um i as opposed to bethesda i can't really see 
any of these franchises besides if they wanted to do that with call of duty which they just confirmed they weren't planning on being you know what i keep saying prestige pieces like Mm -hmm. like i mean i guess some of these some of these i just don't know so like you know i don't know what um uh, I don't know what Geometry Wars is. I've heard that before. I I'm not familiar with it. You know, I hear that and, on Xbox all the time. So yeah, um, I mean, or yeah. I hear people talk about that on Xbox. So I I could see that being a thing because I don't know if yeah. it's exclusive to Xbox, but mm-hmm. as somebody that doesn't know anything about that game, <laughs> it is already like yeah, uh, like linked, associated with Xbox yeah, to you with yeah. Xbox. So I could see them making that exclusive. I could see StarCraft maybe. Well, no, because mostly that's that's usually PC, right? Like, yeah, which I mean, I mean, they could do a console still, StarCraft yeah. because there hasn't been a new StarCraft in a while, to my understanding. Not that I know anything, um, but but yeah. So like, other than that, though, like most of these things are like World of Warcraft. There's no way they're going to bother doing anything exclusive with that because that's it's not prime. It's primarily PC stuff, and like um, Skylanders wouldn't make any sense. You know, like I don't know, and Crash Yo, Bandicoot they could and these make other a ones. New Pitfall. I could see them doing stuff like that, mm-hmm. <laughs> like make Pitfall, and it's like this, but like you know, they freaking Kid Icarus up upri- uprise it, uh huh, that sort of situation. Is Pitfall the one? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I vaguely remember seeing something about this sometime. <laughs> it's a, it's an old game. <laughs> it is an old game. I don't that's know what, what gun is, is but that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they have an IP called a gun. Um, what else? I saw another game on here that could probably be like have that sort of like resurgence that tenchu yeah. tenchu mm-hmm. i've heard that name that seems like the the sort of ip that's like not huge but they could like make it huge yeah i mean i wonder with some of these two like i i do wonder what activision had planned and what that um yeah, again, like how hands-on or hands-off is Xbox going to be in the first place? You know, mm-hmm. if they were like, all right, you guys were planning on doing new Spyro or a new Tony Hawk Pro Skater or something like that, like, all right, go for it, you know? Um, so like, are they pretty much publishing a publisher at this point, you know, or just bankrolling a publisher and doing that? Or I mean, I mean yeah. their main benefit That's what it seems is... like their acquisitions have been so far. Yeah. Is that they're um, like, all right, do what you do. Yeah. And really, I mean, like like we're we've been talking about too like the the game pass is the main thing it's a they make money through these games making money Mm -hmm. and b it's like it just makes it really easy to be able to um to just pull stuff onto game pass whenever you want put it up like put it on game pass take it off game pass put it on game pass Mm -hmm. at some point you know just because you have it and it's yours and it therefore I mean, I don't know how the internal economics of this kind of stuff works, but I assume it doesn't cost them any money to do it. They don't have like some it probably transaction costs money internal to, to do it. Like it, it probably costs them no real money to do it internally, you know, right. like to list yeah. games that they own, mm-hmm. but they definitely are paying people like other developers right. to play their games. I mean, to put their games on, on Game Pass. Yeah. Or I guess I just mean like licensing wise. I wonder how that mm-hmm. works out. Mm -hmm. Um, or is that what you meant as well yeah that's what i mean like licensing for sure costs them money um Mm -hmm. but i don't know if they're like you know like giving their like studios that like get the most game pass downloads a bonus or whatever Mm -hmm. right like i I don't know about how that works yeah honestly all of that stuff like ecosystems of subscription models to me are so interesting and i wish i knew more about them because like, they're they're usually cagey about a lot of yeah them, seriously you know? i mean like i remember at some point fairly recently when netflix was like yeah no they were they were broke you know and like they but they were still making the witcher or making whatever it was they're making and stuff and so like yeah all that i mean and so, i i wouldn't even call them broke like that's the, i know it's a, like they had money they were just spending it was being more used money it, yes. than they, yeah exactly they're they're exactly. just being super bullish it's like they have all these ben- venture capitalists yep. they're investing billions of dollars in them and they're like oh, okay we'll give a billion dollars to you and a billion dollars <laughs> to you you know um, uh-huh. it's invest 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 until you're profitable sell 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 yep. <laughs> you know like raise prices raise prices raise prices um yeah. as far as like I don't know. I think from what I'm hearing from Xbox is like most of the money that they're making off of 
this isn't even necessarily from the subscriptions but because like Mm -hmm. a lot of people on game or that use game pass don't use game pass in the way that like we would think you know huh. where it's like oh, okay well i don't have they to try a game and then they I buy it or exactly exactly interesting like, they they use it more as like a demo service and they still yeah. buy the game anyway um i mean that's that, great for yeah that's awesome i that's not what i do because i'm stingy but mm. <laughs> but i'm glad that other and, people and are like doing that. to some extent maybe you should because yeah. like how yeah. you use game pass is like you use game pass until you're done using game pass but mm-hmm. i'm sure that like eventually the more you use game pass there will be games that you like and you want to have when you yeah. don't want to have game pass anymore yeah. so you spend the like 40 dollars instead of the 60 dollars mm-hmm. that you would, can get a lot of games for by yeah. being a game pass i'm definitely to buy the game i'm in a state of a stage of life right now where i don't care much about ownership i care mm-hmm. more about the experience of things yeah, but I, I do I don't necessarily wonder... mean it yeah, yeah, yeah. In that way. I just mean like I don't want to pay for my Game Pass subscription, but I but still I want to play this to be game. able to play yeah. this game. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's the thing is like, yeah, a lot of the games that I played on there, I think I even specifically would choose ones that had start and ends that I could just like go ahead and finish it and not have to feel that way. But because I could definitely see if I started playing. I don't know. Yeah. Some kind of multiplayer continuous game or whatever mm-hmm. that then I'd be like, man, I don't want to play 50, pay 15 bucks a month just to be able to play, you know, I don't know, mm-hmm. whatever that thing is. Um, but yeah, so that, that is interesting. I, but like even thinking about like, there's games that I've played um, like Paper Mario and the Origami King, you know, mm-hmm. I played that on your profile and I have no intentions of buying it for myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you, you know, I, yeah, because yeah, it's just done, you know, and it's like, it's also, I think I'm, I have comfort in knowing that I could always buy it later if I ever wanted to. And it's like, mm-hmm. it's only technically going to get cheaper for several years, you know, if anything, mm-hmm. um, it'll get cheaper, not more expensive, but, um, but yeah, no, still, that's great that that's, that there's, people doing that and that that works for them um Mm. to be able to use it that way because it i mean that's a perfect use for it as well you know if you don't mind paying the 15 bucks and you don't mind buying the games like that's awesome Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so game pass super cool uh the xbox making all the right moves yep nintendo no difference in what they're going what's what's the one biggest hope that you have to come out of this thing for you know Anything, uh, I want spiral to matter again. Uh, maybe, maybe I doubt it. I doubt it, but maybe get a Crash Bandicoot game that doesn't suck. Maybe that's the <laughs> secondary hope here. Yeah, I mean, I think for for me, one of the biggest things would be um, get yeah, like you mentioned earlier, get Toys for Bob to make a new Banjo Kazooie or something mm, like yeah, that. That would be. Hard. Um, but in the meantime, even if that's not going to happen, um, Banjo Kazooie's on your Switch now. That's the news bit. We kind of already talked about it a little bit. We haven't played it yet, but it's there. Seems like people are pretty happy with it. I've played it on on the N64 and on my Xbox. Yep. Oh, looking at, I pulled up the Nintendo Life review. They gave it a 10 out of 10, which, you know, probably means um, the ports. I was mostly curious, like, how does the port hold? Because obviously if they love the game, they love the game, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I'm still I'm skeptical <laughs> on people's <laughs> on people because I don't have like I don't have an N64 right next to me to like yeah. compare and contrast. But I know that from playing the N64 recently that those games on N64 run like garbage. Um, so <laughs> like I'm not sold that the emulation is bad. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I think that people just don't understand that N64 is bad. I think I mean it's it's some of that and like yeah like what's what's the trade off between if a part of a game run like chugs but then it does have the fog and mm-hmm. then in the emulation it runs smoothly but, but doesn't, doesn't have, have fog. fog like yeah. you know I mm, yeah you do what you will but I you know I would probably choose the one that runs consistently well and stuff mm-hmm. and like then again I I don't even know the technical details of like what's the frame rate of Ocarina also, of I think time a lot of the times the fog yeah. was like uh it was like to make up for the fact that the game didn't run that well right yeah it's like ah if we obscure the visuals they won't look as bad as they do. <laughs> so yeah. like but which is interesting because it's one of those things where like they they'd use it as a tool to like 
you know, because you couldn't, they couldn't achieve a certain thing. Mm -hmm. And so it's- And then that became a part of the game's identity that people- Right. Yeah. 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 So then it's like, at this point, it is almost better to le- to stick it back in there because like, mm-hmm. oh, it's pretty ugly back there. Like you don't want to see it because mm-hmm. like they didn't know anybody ever would, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. something like that. Um, but yeah. In any case, I'll be playing that. But uh, also uh, in other news, Majora's Mask is the next one up. It's coming in February. Cool. There it is. That one's also got some fog in some places. I'm pretty it's sure. True. So I wonder if they're going to, put to say the, if it's going to show gonna nail the fog. We'll see. Uh, have you I ever- probably won't see. You, have I ever yeah. played Majora's Mask? I've played yeah. it a little bit. Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah, I, like, I, I, yeah. I beat Ocarina of Time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I like played a little bit of Majora's Mask. I'm talking about when I was like a kid. Mm-hmm. I, play, I didn't like Ocarina of Time, but I beat it. And then I played a little bit of Majora's Mask, and I was like, this is just that other game that I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't beat that. <laughs> I, and I get that it has like yeah. story differences and it's yeah, like the right. dark, you know, it's dark zone and everybody for whatever reason wants to, the, the elf man to the, the little elf boy um, mm-hmm. to, to have a dark and gritty they story. Really sad. But, yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. I, I haven't ever beaten it. I played, I started it. I never owned it as a kid. I started it twice in my adult life in one on my coworkers N64 that he brought into the office and then the office got reshuffled around and they said, you can't bring that in anymore. So stop playing on that. And then I started playing it on the virtual console on my Wii. Um, but it was on my Wii and I didn't feel like playing it anymore on there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I stopped. Um, I think that was like around when the switch had come out maybe. And so I was like, I oh, don't I'm just going to play games on my switch. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, all that to say, like maybe this will finally be the time that I start it and finish it. But maybe. you know, maybe not. I've got other games to play as well, so it'll be I there. I mean, for me. Arceus exists. At Arceus that point. will have existed at that point. It's true. Yeah. So there it is. Um. All right, and then the last bit of news that we have is one you know a little bit more about than I do because I didn't hear about this as it happened. But uh, basically, Jeff Grubb from venture beat is saying that e3 2022 is a mess and probably also canceled Mm -hmm. not surprising um and cool you know (laughs) yeah um so like this to me seemed obvious because like they weren't even like being like super yeah right forthcoming with whether or not it was going to happen all they said in plain language that it wouldn't happen like um physically physically yeah (laughs) yeah that like in-person e3 was canceled they didn't Mm -hmm. then say we're doing a digital event but then once Mm -hmm. people were like wait are they doing a digital event they're like yeah i guess we're doing a digital event (laughs) um (laughs) but again even with that like clarification quote unquote for the Mm -hmm. audio listeners um they they were quiet about it i was like yeah i guess you know, they're in Scream from the Rooftop. We're yeah. doing a digital E3, everybody. <laughs> Mark your calendars. It's on this mm-hmm. date. Um, so I'm not super surprised that it's a garbage fire and that they don't have their eggs in a row and all that nonsense. Yep. Um, but to me, as long as Nintendo does a direct uh-huh. around summerish time and ideally also does some treehouse stuff around then because treehouse stuff is always fun mm-hmm. i'm set like that's you know yes. what i mean like the other ones are always pretty hit or miss um you know sony's not technically doing e3 stuff anymore anyway yeah. and like mm-hmm. xbox probably will continue to do something because you know that's makes sense i'm sure a lot of companies have generally either they've planned for it and they have a lot to show xbox is going to have time to show because they also have activision now included Mm -hmm. in them and bethesda and stuff so like they definitely will have been planning for it for that time slot and sony's probably been planning for it nintendo's definitely been planning for it um so this it's just a good opportunity for like anyone who has stuff to show is going to show it and anybody who doesn't is like thank you goodness mm. <laughs> they're just gonna leave and not you know like maybe do something later in the year or something like that but all in all i feel like it you know it'll end up being for the best uh yep, for right. a lot of reasons don't need it yeah don't need it but i hope a nintendo direct you know yeah that'd be great that'd be cool that'd be sick 
Yep. I don't really need it to have it happen specifically in summer, but like if it happens in summer, cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I mean, the only reason I think it, you know, would happen, it just like, it makes sense. I'm just yeah, saying, right. Like, exactly. If, if it's like, like probably nah, we're not ready. Yeah. Let's I mean, and that. I guess it also depends on, you know, if whatever earlier of part of the year direct, we may or may not get that probably we'll get if that you shows stuff January direct. The, oh, that's the one. <laughs> Which I think is is now slowly morphing into the February direct. Mm-hmm. I, I'm guessing is going to be yeah because people were wrong about it too many times. So exactly, now they have to try to be right about something else. Yep, yep. Which, for the record, is why I think the conversation of whether or not Breath of the Wild two will be delayed into 2023 is so silly because I don't want it to. But mm-hmm. also, I feel like everybody's trying to just be right about it mm-hmm. and yep. either be the controversial pick or be the controversial controversial pick you know Mm -hmm. like either way is like reverse psychology of like everybody thinks it's going to be delayed but i think it's going to stick or like everybody thinks it's coming out this year but i think it's going to be delayed Mm -hmm. and i'm like who it's cares what you think, it'll come dude, out when like, it comes out and i really like, hope it's this year but you know what it'll be fine i i guess yeah, <laughs> so yeah that's that's my opinion on that um I don't remember what else. Oh yeah, basically, if the the early year direct announces games in up through like holiday season or whatever, then like you know probably E three direct, air, summer direct wouldn't be as necessary or something like that. Usually, it's just like you know if they do the like let's announce stuff for five months out, then they probably will want to have something else in four months to be able to kind of stagger things enough. So mm-hmm. we'll see how it pans out. We but um, more Nintendo presentations are always fun, in my opinion. So that is all. Yeah. Yep. And that's it for the news. Um, you know. No, oh, I forgot. Uh, a little, you know, bringing it back to the Microsoft buying Activision thing. I did a call out for Q and A in in the um, the place. Yep. In Discord, mm-hmm. and we didn't really get any questions. But Falcon did say this long comment that I'm going to read because here it is. Um, This Microsoft acquisition thing kind of reminds me of the golden age of Nintendo in the late 80s, early 90s, where they had all the major third-party devs making games exclusively for the NES and SNES. Capcom, Squaresoft, Konami, among many others. They were operating for all intents and purposes as a monopoly. While Nintendo didn't own those companies, they pretty much used their popularity as a means to strong arm the third-party devs into Nintendo exclusivity deals. They basically said, if you're going to make games for us, we we don't really want you to make games for the companies. Capiche? I I love that. I didn't see that it said capiche. I just saw that there was this... Uh, this hand uh, emoji the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and like I, I just decided to read it like that <laughs> because my brain just interpreted the hand emoji mm-hmm. not even specifically thinking it and then that was exact i yeah. good job using <laughs> emojis and stuff there falcon that was nice um okay but yes in that case it really limited sega to making their own franchises so where nintendo had final fantasy sega had fantasy made fantasy star where nintendo had final fight sega made streets of rage Although it's pretty cutthroat, it's a pretty cutthroat business technique. It forced Sega to get creative in order to remain competitive. I'm not quite sure if we'll see that this generation, but I can't help but wonder how PlayStation will respond. I think Nintendo will continue to do their own thing as they always have, and no one, as no one really buys Nintendo consoles for third-party games anyhow. At least no one I know. I do also wonder if this will start a chain reaction of companies buying each other up in a panic as an attempt to remain viable. It's interesting to speculate on what this means for gaming as a whole. Um, I agree. This is as much, I mean, I've said this, (laughs) this (laughs) when I tweeted my initial thing of like, I don't get Mm -hmm. why people like do all the fear mongering of like, we can't let these companies buy each other because then there's no competition Uh and all the the IP will be bought up. What will we do without IP? Uh Um, and it's like, that's not how IP works (laughs) because once all the IP is gone, either see the thing is like, if what people are saying happens is possible and would actually happen that ip would bottom out because Mm -hmm. too many people would not want to buy into the ip anymore (laughs) so they wouldn't all that value will be gone Mm -hmm. and then it's a blue ocean for whoever wants to make a new thing you know so like the worst case scenario doesn't make sense 
And the realistic scenario is a good thing for us where it's like, oh, well, you have Call of Duty and that's scary to me because Call of Duty is a successful thing. So let me try mm-hmm. to make a successful thing that's similar to Call of Duty, but my yeah. own thing, you know, mm-hmm. um, which is good. I mean, and that's kind of the in a roundabout way how you get Splatoon, you know, yes. like kind of, but not really, but also kind of. Yeah, because Nintendo's like, ah, man, we don't have shooters. Yeah. <laughs> How do we get a shooter? All right, well, let's make a shooter, but like make our Nintendo version of it. Uh-huh. You know, yeah. and I think Nintendo is the case study for yeah. how, what that means, like how that happens. Like mm-hmm. Nintendo literally is that ecosystem. That's the switch. It's like, <laughs> all right, well, you're not gonna put freaking Final Fantasy on our console. We'll make our own. You know, mm-hmm. it's like okay, well, you're not gonna put Skyrim on Wii U got you we'll make breath of the wild you know <laughs> yeah, what i mean yeah, like- exactly totally no i was gonna say i mean exactly the breath of the wild analogy for sure and honestly i wish that nintendo would do it the times that they've tried to do that it's it's been just great and i mm-hmm. feel like oftentimes they don't feel pushed into a corner to have to right um and but so that's also what i what i'm what i was saying about yeah. like so many companies feel comfortable nintendo feels comfortable yes yeah. So they're like, okay, well, we have all the, the boxes that we want to check. So mm-hmm. we don't have to check any more boxes. Yeah. But once there's companies that are like, hey, we got a new box. You, <laughs> you don't check this. <laughs> You're going to be left in the dust. Yep. And then the other company is like, oh, shoot, we got to check that box now. Honestly, like, again, exactly that. Tetris 99, like Battle Royale. Like, it's mm-hmm. yep. it's a very exactly. different kind of Battle Royale, but as far as, like, let's get a lot of people, you know, like, that, mm-hmm. the framework, it's it's there. But that's exactly what I mean. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's not going to be the exact same thing, especially yeah. for a company like Nintendo. It will probably be closer to the same thing with, with Sony's answer, because right. they're a lot more, like, their logic is feeds and speeds. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's, like, the whole thing that people are, like, making the comparison with Nintendo. Like, Nintendo doesn't which is true, but I don't know, like, it's not an inherently, like, negative thing. It doesn't make Nintendo, like, morally better, but the mm-hmm. whole thing is, like, Nintendo's not acquiring all these studios and blah, 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 blah. It's, like, that's because their philosophy as a company to the core is different. Like, mm-hmm. everybody else's logic has always been feeds and speeds. It's mm-hmm. numbers. It's we gotta have the bigger number than the other guy. Mm-hmm. How you get numbers is you throw money at it. It's like, okay, let's spend <laughs> a whole bunch of money on making these supercomputers to play our video games. You know how you make the video games for the supercomputer? You throw a whole bunch of money at buying corporations <laughs> that make the video games. Mm-hmm. That has been their whole logic. Sony does it. Microsoft does it. You know, the, the, Sony may go about it slightly different. They're probably mm-hmm. closer to Nintendo in the sense that like when they spend money, they at least try to make it seem organic. They at least want to make it <laughs> yeah. seem like, yo, we've been longtime friends with Naughty Dog. We didn't pay Naughty Dog to make an exclusive game and then pay them again to make another exclusive game and then continue to pay them until we just decided to buy them out. We didn't mm-hmm. do that. We were just friends, dude. They yeah, make right. games for PlayStation because <laughs> they wanted to make games for PlayStation. We're mm-hmm. great buddies. <laughs> like, no, like they acquired naughty dog it was just a much it was it was it was uh uh death by a thousand cuts it Mm -hmm. was we're gonna slowly chip away at you until it makes sense to be like ah okay we'll throw the pokeball down yeah Um, (laughs) so it's like but nintendo though they have also made acquisitions they kind of do do the like organic like okay well we've been working with this company yeah. uh retro is like or monolith technically is mm-hmm. the last company that they like acquired because mm-hmm. they uh next level i think since then oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. next but, level yeah. next level next level that mm-hmm. was like um before that before that monolith yeah. was the You're last right. one and even that was like death by a thousand cuts of them being like working with them by monolith's own you know like they mm-hmm. wanted to do that they yeah. came to nintendo nintendo didn't go to monolith and say yo we want to buy yeah. you up monolith yeah. was like dude i'm feeling bad about this bandai namco stuff man i'm feeling like i'm in a cage and then nintendo's <laughs> like dude yeah i mean same thing for yeah, yeah like honestly <laughs> even next level from the sounds of it was they were looking to sell at some point nintendo was like i mean better with us than anybody else exactly. so like, they're like all right fine, whatever and like you know kind of even like bayonetta as an ip mm-hmm. and those kinds of things where especially looking at all of the studios that nintendo has that we almost think of as first party studios but aren't like Mm -hmm. how laboratories or whatever like all these studios that technically like they're not um Mm -hmm. really does kind of like 
I don't know, show how it's they're fine to just like be yeah. partners for a while. Just, it's so yeah. different. It's so yeah. much, like if Nintendo never had to buy a studio, like Game Freak, Nintendo yeah. doesn't own Game Freak. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if they mm-hmm. never have to purchase a studio, they never will. Yeah. But if it comes to the, the point where Game Freak's like, I don't know, man, I think I might want to like sell off to Microsoft, you know that Nintendo's going to step in and try to buy it. Right. <laughs> you yeah, know, for like, sure. I mean, I do wonder, like, I feel like, especially because they work with a lot of Japanese companies, right? You know, like Honor and that kind mm. of thing, I guess. And like culturally, I'm sure there's just like an understanding of like, you, you know, you're going you're gonna to make games for us and whatever. But I do wonder, like, if Game Freak today decided to i mean they've made some games for other places not a Mm -hmm. ton but like you know if they decided to make a really big ip not pokemon if they made something that was bigger than pokemon on a different platform yeah i could see nintendo being. i mean justin said yeah game freak has made other games friends they have they made the that one uh, I don't even remember what they, they are. Made, There's um, the one with the elephant, the one with freaking, like the yeah, Tembo the Badass platformer. elephant. Uh, they made the game. That one with the uh, Pete was just swords talking about or what something. Is the game called? <laughs> freaking town or whatever. The heck oh, Little Town Hero. Yeah, I that. think that one was only on. Um, I think it was on only Steam. Nintendo. I think it's oh, on Steam it? now. I think. Oh. Um, but but yeah, they make sure is. Yep. There Look at that. Is. But yeah, in any case, all that to say, like, I do wonder if Game Freak made a game that was Uh bigger than Pokemon or as big as Pokemon Mm -hmm. or close to or at least like as big as as ambitious or whatever. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Nintendo would raise their eyebrow and I guarantee they would try to throw their hat in the ring about purchasing them. Yeah. Um, But I think it is kind of like understood that, you know, pretty much they'll throw their A teams at Nintendo stuff and have their B teams if they want to do some other things Mm -hmm. um, here or there. And that's, you know, that's kind of generally fine, but it is funny. Yeah. As far as the topic of all of this and like monopolies and stuff, the, the analogy, not even quite analogy, but the thing that I thought of was just like, it's IPs and brain space and that kind of stuff. Like Mm -hmm. ideas are not a cake that can be divided up. And it's not Mm -hmm. like, like you can have a monopoly of, um, you know like being the only electric land. provider you have, of yeah you can yeah. monopolize land because that like is like practical resource. things that right. like people need a certain amount of or whatever like 100 percent, you can have monopolies of any of those kinds of things because there's only a certain amount to go around but anything where it's like you could be super popular today and irrelevant tomorrow across the whole board of all of the things just because you know some other thing comes up you know suddenly temtem is the most popular thing of all time Mm -hmm. um and now you know call of duty does isn't worth anything better um basically it's just like it's like the tweet that i said where it's like pokemon is more viable than mickey mouse right mickey mouse is like a (laughs) hundred pikachu came out in the 90s yeah I wasn't even, neither one of us were thought of when yeah. Mickey Mouse was created. We were functioning humans when Pikachu came out. I, and Pikachu I like was the idea though. more valuable. The way you phrased it almost makes it feel like neither of us were considered when Mickey Mouse was created. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't think of me. <laughs> no. And they didn't, but, honestly. That's true, they didn't, they didn't. But, but no, I mean like. Yeah, no, totally. The fact that like something that, we have seen come into yeah. what it is usurp the thing that was that is still to this day in media viewed as like you know like they still call disney which is like this huge conglomerate that mm-hmm. like makes all these very valuable things the house mm-hmm. of that the mouse built and like mm-hmm. the house of the yeah. house and like all that stuff and he's the least valuable thing for them oh, right for now for sure <laughs> yeah you know like He's relegated to like in between cartoons on Disney Channel kinds of stuff or whatever, Mm -hmm. you know, like, yeah, that's it's so interesting. But even thinking about like, you know, people with Disney, they're like they have a monopoly or something like that. It's Mm -hmm. like, no, they um, they're they just bought stuff that they that they think that their creators can make something cool with. Yeah. And that's what they're doing, you know, like. D- dc at one point or another was way more like mm-hmm. interesting or like exciting for people yeah. to oh shoot man they made the dark knight <laughs> it's up <laughs> they're yeah. about to make all types of crazy uh comic book stuff but now dc is who cares you know <laughs> like it's almost like a hot take to be like yo i like dc movies <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah yeah it's it is 
just interesting all around. So yeah, we'll see what they can. We came back around to that. I think we're going to probably come back to that topic in the Q and a, which is now Q and a it's Q and a time. Um, if you're uh, in discord, you feel free to ask some questions too. Cause it's you know, true, it's true. that's the uh, questions. Um, but otherwise here we go. Twitter. Actually, I'm going to check Twitter real quick. Make sure nothing else came in last minute while Twitter is super broken for whatever reason. Um, right. Nothing. Cool. Uh, true for Asked, do you foresee Microsoft strengthening their par- partnerships with Nintendo after this acquisition to further corner the market? Uh, no. I think that like they they have already been strengthening their partnerships across the board with everybody. Like I think mm-hmm. that they're as much as like Sony is willing to work with them, they're going to work yeah. with Sony too. Yeah. Um, so like, yes, in the sense that like, they will strengthen their partnership with Nintendo, but I don't think it's going to be anything that's like, yo, we gotta like freaking get the edge on Sony. Cause they don't want to work with us, but Nintendo does. It's like, they're, it, they're extending the same offers, but yeah. Nintendo is just more willing, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, I, I generally agree. Yeah. I, I going back to my earlier thought too, you know, like that I thought, that this could be an opportunity to see more Activision stuff on on Nintendo platforms and stuff like that. But honestly, the the main holdout is just is just Call of Duty, and I don't really see that changing anytime soon because the teams that are working on it are still going to be the same teams that are working on it. So like, you know, mm. uh, yeah, I just I don't it it still seems like uh, Microsoft and Xbox and stuff are still thinking you know relatively unriskily about what games will go well on different platforms or mm-hmm. anything like that you know so like the, there are a couple that they're like yeah those make sense on switch but it's the ones that legitimately it's like how are these not on switch kinds mm-hmm. of things you know like the your cup heads and your ori and stuff like that like those are just like so obviously they belong on a nintendo platform but you don't really see other than like hellblade which even then that was i think during the or before the transition or like the outer worlds which also was during before the yeah, trans- like those that kinds was of like a, a, another version of them like honoring like death belief. exactly yeah right exactly that so yeah i don't i don't know that i see them like you know twisting their own arms to get stuff on nintendo platforms any more than than they already were mm-hmm. um, but it's nice that at least it seems like the games that like why are these not on a Nintendo, Nintendo platform at least will be on them and yeah, maybe like they're actually, asking themselves those same questions they're yeah, right. being like why do we not have cuphead yeah there's a huge audience here they'll definitely buy this and stuff the one thing that this might change is that um maybe activision ip will come day and date on switch now mm. instead of doing the whole like hey you bought it last year but you want to double dip on a handheld kind of thing mm-hmm. that they were doing with literally every single game that they mm-hmm. like tony hawk spyro crash all those games came out later yep. on just the switch which is like eh, pretty gross scummy, you know it's super scummy yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it a- was it's, a, it's another one of those like situations where they let gamers do the marketing for them because so many gamers buy, like they drink the Kool Aid, where it's like, yeah, a developers like you know, Switch is just not powerful enough to run this game. Yeah, and then they're like, yeah, man, I'm a fanboy, so I've already been banging that drum. And then a year <laughs> later, it's like, oh shoot, we we found the power, guys. <laughs> they were hiding it somewhere. And Nintendo <laughs> showed us the shelf with all the power, and now the game's on there. Uh, I would love to see that shelf. <laughs> yep. So there it is. You know, it's good. Um, Mark Erickson, who's that guy, asked, but can you say Activision acquisition five times fast? Absolutely not. Activision I acquisition. I tried. Activision acquisition. Uh, so you already messed up. <laughs> Activision acquisition. Activision acquisition. Ah, nope. It's impossible. I tried it in the car for what it's worth when I saw the tweet. And I, I got maybe to three. Um, so, no, that's, you know. And define fast. Stuff. Define yeah. fast. That's also true. I can say it's slow and then speed it up real quick. Because I know? already talk pretty fast. Also true. <laughs> but do I have to like talk faster than I already talk? Or can I just say it at my normal pace? That we'll never know. Is Except it, for unless Mark, Mark and I in chat. <laughs> so I, so we, we could know <laughs> is the answer for that. Oh, no, he's um, not. He's not. We'll never know. <laughs> uh, Justin asked in chat. Uh, do, 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 do. 
no, there was a question mark. So I thought it was specifically a question, but he did say, I think X Nintendo makes modes, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the, I think Nintendo makes the most sense of a console that will break on offering Game Pass slash X Cloud. They seem much more open to cloud versions of games than the others, and Microsoft has already has already has a relationship and presence on the eShop. Yeah, I it's it definitely. I mean, it's from what it sounds like, it's definitely on Nintendo's side of like if they're willing to do it or not. The thing that I could see pushing it over the edge is once there's enough sales data which it seems like at this point there might be to show that like games on game pass, the, the thing you were talking about before and Mark that back people to, with buy more games. Yeah, because of exactly. And it, that is not as a detriment to their own eShop. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it might be to some degree to be perfectly honest, but if they also have some money, you know, could be a 50, 50 split where game pass is beneficial for Nintendo because they get something out of it you know they get mm-hmm. part of the money but also i think that like also get some sales that's kind of like people's logic with virtual console where it was like mm. the reason why they didn't put virtual console is because the indies wouldn't sell as much and i was like no right, it was yeah. kind of like people weren't buying virtual console games because <laughs> of the indies. like it was like why yeah. would i play this old version of this video game when they made a new one <laughs> so. yeah right so yeah i mean i at this point, it feels kind of like if it was going to happen, it might have already happened, but maybe not too, because they're still getting started with Game Pass stuff. So we'll see. Yeah, no, I could, I could see it happening. Yeah, moving forward. Uh, Poofy Rain asked on Twitter: Will Nintendo benefit the Microsoft and Activision deal? Follow, uh, follow up question: Do you believe that Nintendo Pokemon Arceus would be the best selling Pokemon game and make it top five best selling game of Nintendo Switch? and game of the year so two separate Uh, questions first of all will nintendo benefit from the microsoft and activision deal i guess we talked in a roundabout way yeah Yeah. but yeah we talked about it but yeah in a roundabout way sure um the other one though will pokemon arceus be the best-selling pokemon game absolutely not no (laughs) make it to the best i mean uh Top, top five, five of the Switch game of Nintendo Switch? Absolutely no. <laughs> um, game of the year, or or do you mean like top five best selling games of the year? Probably, I could see that. I could see it being in the top five best selling games of twenty twenty two. Yeah, um, but I'm game thinking of the year it's... in terms of like quality, probably not. No, yeah, we're not I... getting a Pokemon game of the year game until. Uh, they go heads down and, and take five, six years to make a video yeah. game. I, I could see it winning or at least being nominated for some for like kind of Nintendo award or a couple of awards. Game. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, Family Game but, of the Year. Uh, or... Breath of the Wild 2 comes out this year. Oh, you know, yeah, think, yeah, for sure. There's, there's yeah. a lot of games that are already strong yes. contenders over Pokemon. Like, I would, I could see Splatoon 3 getting it over Pokemon. Too. Yeah, right. Um, no, totally. I mean, or like, you know, your favorite Mario plus Rabbids. I mean, second. true, true. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, totally. But too, I mean, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, if that turns out well, I don't know if um, I doubt I mean, but I'm just like within the family <laughs> yeah. game kind of mm-hmm. context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, true. you know, mm-hmm. um, the, the Nintendo Award, yeah. which wasn't this past year. But so, yeah, it, it definitely kind of suffers um, by being Jack of all trades, Master of None kind of a thing in that regard. We don't know yet. The game's not out, but most likely it'll be that like it's not. They just don't it's, double. It's down great for Pokemon stuff. to be doing what it's doing in mm-hmm. this regard, but yeah, as far as like, it's not better than as an RPG or better as a mm-hmm. uh, because op- most know. games that get the like game of the year they're like jack of all trades master of some stuff yeah exactly <laughs> you know, like, you know, like, totally <laughs> uh pokemon's not really that. Uh-huh. Um, so like they, they would have to at least, you know, like, ha- like be the same video game, but now they have some like industry leading combat, you know, yeah. like yeah. some stuff like that. I could see that propelling Pokemon to being a game mm-hmm. of the year level game. Or, I mean, honestly, they could, if they really put their mind to it, they could probably like get a nomination for, and not for this game, I don't think, but for soundtrack, you know, like yeah, if they really tried i bet that could happen that's mm-hmm. not they don't care enough to make yeah, that happen um 
It does sound like, like I listened, I watched uh, some clip that they posted or something. It was like a minute long, just of like a little bit of gameplay. And it definitely seems like it's, you know, Breath of the Wild inspired in terms of like the sound design in general. Mm-hmm. And I was a fan of the sound design of Breath of the Wild. So, you know, lots of nature sounds, but also like things that you do like have. Contextual and, and exactly. Like good little um, responses of like the equivalent to the, you know, right. just little, little things that are. And that's the, like, to. that is also like a kind of messed up thing about a lot of Nintendo games. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, they sure look good. Um, but it's not like different. Enough, yeah. You know, it's like right. everybody just expects Nintendo game music to be good. But yeah. how, how is it different from just being good? Um, yeah. Whereas like doom doesn't happen all the time so like doom just be like it's soundtrack just being straight up a good like metal album yeah <laughs> it's enough for them to be like oh the game this is music this soundtrack of the year level stuff 100 percent true yeah it literally just like i mean yeah I, i've enjoyed listening to doom soundtrack here and there yeah, it's a good soundtrack um, but, but like yeah i definitely like there's plenty of metal that i think is better than that and like hmm. You know, it is what it is. It's kind of um, like the the video game story equivalent of like, yo, this yes. is the first time that it tried to emulate something that I would just listen to anyway outside of a video game, and uh-huh. it did that well or whatever, right? Um, rather than it being like what a Nintendo game or, or yeah, well, a Nintendo game would have to do yeah. to get that same award because like the music just being good isn't enough anymore. It would have yeah. to be good and also drive the gameplay and so like yeah. I just looked up um, best score music for 2017 because I still think Xenoblade Chronicles two. I mean, like Justin just said, I feel like our RPGs get shafted a little on the soundtrack thing in general. Mm-hmm. I would agree with that um, because honestly, typically they have a really broad like a just they they got good soundtrack stuff. um mm. so the the games that got nominated i wouldn't disagree with a bunch of these um so like i i haven't played near automata but probably great soundtrack i'd guess cuphead like very inventive it was cool mm. um destiny 2 i i don't know i mean from what i, heard, I would it's guess halo <laughs> probably not yeah exactly <laughs> um persona 5 probably probably great i'd guess um i K-pop. This is the one that, like, I'm of two minds of this. I really enjoyed the Super Mario Odyssey soundtrack, mm. but, but at the same time, I mean, it's, it's the it's the Nintendo it's, soundtrack. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's hard it's to good, say, but it's it's not, it's not doing I, it. yeah it's exactly. Doing I don't know. It's tricky. Um, so like, I, yeah, I would put Xenoblade Chronicles two on there because it also like it has the, like very standard like battle themes and stuff but then Mm. especially like there's some really really cool choral arrangements on that that like don't show up in most other games and that was pretty special and i don't know yeah oh also that game just might not have made the cutoff so that's probably a thing oh yeah it was i don't know that it would have changed it it was was a december game so if i look for i'm just gonna check real fast for 2018 when it would have made it the cutoff, definitely but didn't get nominated. And no, because that's the thing. Like December, everybody games, forgets about it. Unless they're yeah. Super Smash Brothers, they might as well not exist. Yes, because for the game awards, yeah. recent, yeah, because it's recency bias. It's like yeah. this isn't uh, eligible for this year, and we'll forget about it by next. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Best score music for 2018 it is not on there. Um, I have. I didn't play several of the games. Celeste and Re- and Octopath Traveler. I did play those. But then I don't know for Marvel Spider Man, for Nino Cooney 2, for God of War, Red Dead Redemption 2, which did win. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't remember the music from any of that. Played Marvel <laughs> Spider Man. Marvel Spider Man, from what I remember, I think the soundtrack of Miles Morales is better. Mm-hmm. That's because mm-hmm. it's just like straight up music. <laughs> it's, yeah, like, right. it's like straight up. That's the thing. I also, I don't know. <laughs> Like if you're like, yeah, GTA wins best music. And it's like, yeah, because it's just your favorite band. Yeah, bands. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. I don't know how, if that counts, you know? Yeah. Oh, a very unrelated thing. Just random tidbit. My band in high school, we- uh, You scored a tried... Spider-Man game? <laughs> That's the one. No, we, uh, we, we um, blah, 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 like, submitted for a contest to try to get one of your tracks on- the new burnout game at the time which i i think is was burnout revenge and i'm sure it was like 
there were multiple tiers. And also at some point they would have just been like, nah, this one just sucks. We're not going to pick it. Also, it's bad probably, ones. that's probably like, those are like the worst kinds of contests. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for it's sure. It's just like, it's, it's like, hey, everybody, give us music that we don't have to pay as much for like yep. you know, we'll, we'll give you like a trip <laughs> and, and, and it was like instead of like all thousands. like just crowdsource like you know which one got played the most pretty much mm-hmm. which is like that's always in any case we got like pretty far in what i thought was the whole thing but i realized now it's probably just like the first round or something mm-hmm. like that and it's i in in a world where for whatever reason we did win that the game the song did go in the game i would be so embarrassed about it now because it was <laughs> I don't even remember which song it was, but I know that it was bad. <laughs> so, uh, but this is a little fun thing to think back on and remember that that was weird. Hey, at least uh, you're that's not the getting, one. You're at least shafted for uh, unpaid licensing that they should. That's true. You for the, you're not wrong. The video game. <laughs> um, but yeah. All right. So okay, but to answer the the question, yeah, that Poofy Rain asked. How, how, what do you think? So we said no to all the things yeah. for Legends Arceus. How do you think it will sell when it's all said and done? And, you know, like, how does that fare in terms of, like, best-selling games on Switch? I can see it being stuff? the second best game. Second best-selling game on, um, on Switch. Pokemon game on yeah. Switch. I could see yeah. it being, uh, well, kind of depends on it selling future games a little than, bit, too. I can see, I, I just meant that we have so far. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, perfect. I could see it selling more than Let's Go, mm-hmm. but come to think of it, I don't know if it'll sell more than Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl because yeah, um, there's two of those, you know? Yeah. Um, and there's two of Let's Go, Pikachu, and Eevee, but like even the two of those combined sold well, you know, yeah. more than like games of their ilk <laughs> typically mm-hmm. sell. Um, but I think Arceus will sell more than that. You know, 11 million... Well, I think it's at like closer, like thirteen. It's like twelve ish. I'm um, on my way to find an out um, to see where we're at. But that's not, that's doable for 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 Arceus. Yeah. I don't know about uh, whatever Brilliant Diamond is going to like settle at because that's like mm-hmm. outpacing every yeah. other Pokemon game except for Sword and Shield. Well, every other yeah. Pokemon game on Switch except for Sword and Shield. Yeah. I so yeah, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee is at thirteen point eight three mm-hmm. million. Yeah. I can see um, it passing that. I can see. It, I mean, be within that realm. It's it is hard because it, it. Some of it really does depend on just how it pans out. You know, like how just how good of a game it is. If it's something where it's like eh, it was a nice experiment. I don't but think like, passing. Let's go. Depends on that. <laughs> so I, I think like the excitement around Arceus mm-hmm. is enough to propel it past. Let's go. Yeah, because like that's kind of a lot of what sold. Let's go is that it was like first yeah. Oh, for sure. Pokemon game. Yeah, Sick, you know. I mean, it definitely um, slowed down past that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think so. I guess what I'm thinking is, um, I mean, and I I think I underestimate how many people just buy games because they like the way they look or yeah, like you know that kind of thing. Um, also, the I assume people, people are, are more informed than they are. It's Pokemon yeah exactly like, there's a lot of people that are complaining about the pokemon game right there's, i'm seeing a lot of people be like oh man i wish i didn't look at the leaks because game looks garbage but they're going to buy the game anyway yeah. like they're <laughs> buying the game <laughs> so, yeah you know, right um there are millions of people that whether they want to like it or not are going to buy and like this video game yeah on top of that that will which will dwarf that number there are millions of people that just want to buy the new pokemon thing Mm -hmm. and then on top of that there's people that like that we've been talking about that are like last pokemon fans that see this new pokemon game they're like oh shoot this is closer to what i would want out of a pokemon game in 2022 so Mm -hmm. they buy it because of that um i think that might be enough to get it and and within like like a rock's throw of like 16 17 million units yeah but it has to be good to be on the level of sword and shield i think that's true and i don't think it's going to be that good right (laughs) (laughs) no i could i mean i would agree and i think like sword and shield also has the benefit of this it was out first and so it's just had more time and stuff Mm -hmm. and you know even uh, even considering like saying says that doesn't really matter yes that's true but um in terms of like within the same ip you know that kind of a thing um it is maybe more of a factor than with animal crossing which is just a full new ip but even then you know um yeah 
Yeah. Cause breath of the wild is only sold a little bit more than, than sword and shield. But at the same time, one of those is Pokemon. So yeah, and you there's know, two of them. <laughs> yes. So it's like, yeah, exactly. Double dipping and you know, actually, Oh, that is a detriment to Arceus though. Yeah. But that's that what I, yeah. That's exactly yeah. why I'm like, it's not going to be the best selling one. Yeah. Right, I could see it, it out selling. Let's go. I don't know about bringing diamond shadow pearl. Yeah. Like in the long run, it will sell more than where I'm sure Brilliant Diamond Shining Pro are at, mm-hmm. but it won't outsell it, I don't think. Yeah. So there you go. We'll see um, what happens. The last question from Twitter is Jumpo asked, if you had infinite money, what company would you acquire? Oh, also, did we add that Brandon Wilson also asked about the, oh, we didn't, we didn't, did we talk about the Activision? There was a question. Uh, about- yeah. We talked about it. Uh, I mean, we can come back to it if we want. But anywho, shout out Brandon Wilson. He's he's formerly. I shouted him out too. If that if I said that he also asked the question, but more of a shout out then. No, yeah, yeah. shout out, shout out. Good I call. Missed that. I, missed that. <laughs> I wanted to make sure I did that. Yeah. Good. I like him. He's cool. Indeed. Um. So yeah, Jumpo asked if you had infinite money, what company would you acquire? I mean, is it? Is it not obvious? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> not even Nintendo Pokemon Company. I would buy yeah. Pokemon Company free, it's super, um, super free. It's not even a second thought in my head. <laughs> let's maybe to make it more interesting because, yeah, I feel like that's kind of it just is right there. Yeah. Um, yep, <laughs> for either Pokemon Company or Nintendo, like, yeah, I would, I mean, I would they're not allowed. Nintendo, yeah, we got it. Um, mm. so instead, if you were the head of Nintendo. And you what had infinite studio money. Would you buy? What would you? Yeah, maybe um, let's say two instead, just to make it a little bit more interesting. So there's sometimes having a little bit more options gives more like leeway to do like a, a safe pick and a risky pick or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, Activision. <laughs> 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 uh just buy xbox and sony you know there you go infinite money no that's a fact not. that's a fact yeah apple um <laughs> uh i would probably buy like freaking um yacht club you know mm-hmm. like i would buy like yacht club yeah. and then like give them money to expand and to make even bigger uh-huh. shovel night things but again i mean like that also is like is it is the question rooted in like what would i buy to make more money or what would i buy because i like the thing you know yeah right because pokemon's both like that was that's why it's an easy thing it's like i could make so much money if yeah I, right. if i owned pokemon i could make that <laughs> so, like yeah <laughs> Very true. I mean, yeah, I think the question, the motive for buying the thing is definitely a big part of it. And like, it it would be kind of easy to just be like, oh, I'll just buy, you know, the ones that are already working. Like, I'll just buy HAL Laboratories or buy mm-hmm, um, yeah. Grezzo or buy, you know. Yeah, those weren't even, I was that kind of a thing. That. I was just thinking um, like third parties that are the like, one that we think of as third parties. Right. Yeah, exactly. I feel like this, this, barely counts in that category then i might say bandai um mm-hmm. yeah bandai also is like another one that i was because that feels of. like they would be they already kind of do the whole monolith soft thing of yep. like being really helpful internally but i feel like they probably can't use them as freely as they would want to mm-hmm. because you know they're a whole separate company and they have to like have more specific contracts with them i bet than being able to just pull people from projects and make some match and that kind of stuff. Yeah, that would that would be my other one is Bandai Namco because I'm yeah. always talking about Nintendo should buy Bandai. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I mean it just makes too much sense. They've helped yeah, them yeah. on so many of their games, and I think yep. that if they had full access to, and not even because like whenever I bring that up, it's like oh, but I don't think it's right that Nintendo would have like they would own like the anime game licenses, and like, mm-hmm. I don't care about any of their literally none of their licenses <laughs> motivate <laughs> this yeah. decision at all. It is mm-hmm. purely based on like manpower and talent <laughs> like i don't care about them owning tekken or pac-man or whatever <laughs> yeah. like yeah rise gang said japan's antitrust is very rigid i've been told so i don't think they would even be able to um, i do want to- their antitrust is more rigid in terms of like international forcefully companies. oh okay international interesting companies. yeah 
um, they would be able to buy it at Bandai Namco. Yeah. I mean, if, it's, yeah. if, they, if they had the funds, you know, and if right. they were willing to spend mm-hmm. that much money, like they have money, like they have big money, but they're not going to freaking drop $50 billion on a company, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I feel like Bandai is a safe pick. Se- second pick for me. Um, oh, I'm tempted to say like way forward or something, mm-hmm. but I don't. I don't know how much faith I have in way forward <laughs> and yet to be determined because they've done some cool stuff. Like Shantae from what I've seen is pretty neat. And like, we'll see how advanced no, wars turns out and stuff. Bakugan. They, that's the, yes, exactly. It's so made. obviously about it, you know, <laughs> no, but that's the thing is like, they have stuff like that. I'm like, I don't, I don't know, man, <laughs> that feels whatever. But I mean, there's some other ones like, you know, level five or something would make sense or, mm-hmm. um, other things like that, but uh, buy level yeah, five some... and make them make a, a Pokemon game. There you go. Checks out. All right, nice. No, and then no. we had one question from chat um, that was asked earlier, and I pulled up here. Sardi asks, "Are we talking Pokemon gym stuff today? What would Parker pick?" Okay, what? I don't get the question. <laughs> so uh, we're planning on doing this like stream thing for chat where uh we make a pokemon league basically um hey, i thought of- about AJ, or um mitch and i did that for each other when we were playing let's go we were like let's like make gyms oh, yeah, for you each did other talk about that yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. like some kind of thing but the themes instead of being like um a water, water gym or whatever gym. yeah exactly it yeah. was like oh it was interesting i don't remember what it was but we're- like so that's Plenty. exactly what we're doing but it's like a Love like it. it's elite four is gym yep. leaders it's mm-hmm. the champion blah 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 cool um nice. and the themes at first would like was present because like this was like an idea that i was like talking about um on stream at some point or another and mm-hmm. then people were like oh we should do that and i'm like all right that's it um and at first it was like ah oh, well i'm a dragon champion i'm a warrior well, yeah well. yeah and it was like nah but like what if we made it more than that and it was just like general themes like trev is a part of it and his gym is smash brother characters yeah so, right so, like as long as it's like some sort of like concise theme mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be this rigid thing because like even in pokemon gyms they don't do that anymore freaking candace has a uh uh freaking medicham <laughs> like what yeah um, so that that's the the general thing of it where it's like me and a bunch of other streamer friends are going to make uh teams for gym battles and elite four challenges and whatnot um and chat will get to challenge them and i want to think of some sort of like end goal you know where it's like all right so it's incentive to like go to all these different people's streams and stuff so that they can challenge them on stream and then once you get all the badges and you beat the elite four and the champion Mm -hmm. and whatnot maybe you get something I don't know what that thing is yet, though. I like that. I am looking, um, I think, on my computer. So, ah, <laughs> spreadsheets, you know? Yeah. That's what That's what spreadsheets are. Um, is I don't know what that means. <laughs> I found, I just searched on my work computer, and I have a spreadsheet called Pokemon Let's Go Gyms, and it was mm-hmm. my ideas for things. Um, so here, I'm just going to tell you a bunch of my ideas. Um, that I completely forgot. So I'm just going to see if I um, remember what they are. Um, okay. So here's, here's just what I had on here. Some uh, that are Pokemon that focus on metronome, Pokemon with one hit KO moves, Alolan only, um, monotype teams, cute teams, um, various different like Pokemon that focus on like, uh, uh status moves or whatever um unexpected types then i put a note that said pokemon whose moves don't match their types okay so i guess it's like you know you gotta blast always fire type protect (laughs) exactly that kind of a thing um and then the switching pokemon gym where like they've all got like u-turn and those kinds of things like everything they do vault switch and Uh, yeah um mine's a sun gym for those that are curious um and it's just a sun team. It's like Pokemon with like drought and fire type Pokemon and nice you know, that type of stuff. That's fun. All right. So yeah, that was there's more stuff on this spreadsheet, but I don't uh, is, is... so sorry to say what would your team be? 
what would my team be sword and shield so you're like theme honestly i feel like maybe the most fun one would be either the the last two the either the like their moves don't match their typing which isn't Mm -hmm. great for like stab purposes and all that kind of thing but it would be at least unexpected Mm -hmm. um or the pokemon switching thing could be really interesting we're like yeah they use a lot of volt switch kinds of u-turn kinds of moves Mm-hmm. Um, I think yeah, something where uh, something that keeps you on your toes a little bit feels fun. There you go. That's my that's my thought. Now we need. I love that I, that the spreadsheet was still there. Yes. <laughs> Mark said charts. Man, I love organized data. I hate that there's a command. <laughs> there's a command, and it's like because of you and you, mm-hmm. <laughs> it is both of your fault that yes. like there's a that like that. It is connected to the stream brand, and I never talk about spreadsheets. I will go, I, like, literally, the whole reason why that became a thing is yeah. because I jokingly was like, um, uh, I would have to make a spreadsheet about some sort of like mm-hmm. long drawn out thing that that user was like asking me about, like an answer to or whatever. And yeah. I was like, you know, lol. <laughs> and she was like, well, like, what if you did? <laughs> I'm like, but I don't want to, like. This was a joke. Don't try to um, turn this into a project for me. <laughs> but what if she did? I don't want to. You know, what a time. Um, all right. And that's it technically for the podcast, except for um, I Marvel Minute purposes. Oh, yeah. Blah, true, blah, blah, blah. True, true. Um, have you seen if the trailer? I haven't from- seen the Moon Knight trailer, GTFO. Unless you don't care <laughs> about the Moon Knight trailer, then you yeah. can stay. I mean, I guess yeah. there's not really any spoilers from just a trailer, but yeah, go watch. watch I trailer. mean, but if you want to see a trailer for yourself, you want to see. It's, so it's like actually, how people like get mad about direct spoilers, where it's like it's yeah. still it's an ad, but like, I'm right? Kidding. Yeah, <laughs> I I will say like if this isn't anything about the content of it. Um, all the past shows this like last year, I watched a lot of the like, you know, screen crush stuff, new rock stars type thing, like those mm-hmm. breakdowns and analysis and whatever. And I, Ashley and I were talking about it and I watched one for this trailer, but I think I'm going to, I th- I think I'm going <laughs> to not. Yeah, exactly. And like, because it was fun with WandaVision because we really didn't like, know what was heck? going on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But like it, the, the further we got into more of the shows, it was kind of like, well, this is kind of what happens in the next comic um probably they'll do something a little bit like that mm. so you know um and then and that ended up happening yeah exactly <laughs> it's like, mm. yeah so i'm i think i'm gonna not do that and just see how that pans out instead and if i enjoy things more because of it but it is fun to have i you think know, it's extra fun what, i don't really like it. watching the stuff that they make beforehand it's kind yeah. of like I don't really like watching games, game explain analysis for games before they come out, even mm-hmm. though they're not like always right either. But right, like yeah. in retrospect, it's fun to like hear the discussion about like, oh, and this happened uh-huh. and that was cool because we thought blah, blah, blah. Like that stuff yeah. is fun. Um, but I don't really want to know, like, th- I don't want you to spoil the or, or try to spoil the thing for me, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so I don't really like watching those like trailer analysis beforehand. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the retrospective yeah. and the like all right what happens next stuff as mm-hmm. far as like what movie are they you know what other heroes i like yeah that. no i feel that for sure i i'm more of the type to watch the analysis stuff because i think it's fun but i feel like i definitely have had op- situations where it kind of ruins the fun of it as well so it's it depends i think on what the thing is and like how mm. well the trailer's made and stuff to be able to kind of hide those things so you know like yeah it just it, it depends from thing to thing um, mm. where sometimes it becomes fun and other times it's like, nope, they spoiled the only four surprises that were in that yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like a trailer for a bad comedy where like, like the what three if, funny what jokes. is a good example of that. Yeah. It's like, oh man, all the substance was in the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's honestly, so, I mean, as far as Moon Knight goes, I, I do wonder. Moon if Knight it's, is, if, I don't care. <laughs> I Moon think Knight I care. I like the vibe a like, lot. Really okay. Yeah, it's I like the vibe and I think it looks like it's going to be fun, but I could also see it um seeming more like I don't know, suspenseful or more like so, uh, grandiose in certain ways than it actually ends up being and like because mm-hmm. I I love, you know, like Memento or whatever, like these things where it seems like 
the, the point of this show is he doesn't really know what's going on, but you know, we know what's going on a little bit. Um, mm. And if they do that right, they could, it could be really good. But if they do that wrong, it just ends up kind of being a little boring. So, mm -hmm. um, and he doesn't have powers to really other than like, I mean, you know, whatever, like, again, yeah. I mean, like, like rising Gang said, it's just Marvel's Batman. Don't get too excited. Like, I don't care that much about Batman in the fighting context and all that. So they really have to sell it on the, personality and like yeah. confusion aspect and you the know those like, kinds of things for the the good thing of the mcu at large is that like you're kind of forced to give things a chance because like yeah. you're going to be lost if you don't yep <laughs> um but the only way that it feels good to watch stuff like that for that context is mm -hmm. if I'm given some sort of carrot on the stick, you know, yeah. like it would be like, if I didn't already care about Spider-Man for mm -hmm. whatever stupid reason, like if I only <laughs> knew about Marvel because of the MCU, um, I would care about Spider-Man because they used Iron Man to help market that movie, you know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm if there was like some sort of carrot on the stick in that way and kind of like Hawkeye, I mean, Hawkeye yeah. is an established thing, but a lot of the reason why I cared about Hawkeye was because I knew that like, um, Milena was going to be in it or Yelena yeah. was going to be in it. Yeah. Um, fine. so I was like, Oh yeah, I like her. She's a good character. <laughs> um, yeah. there's nothing like that in this. Yeah. So I, far for I, sure. I, I don't care about, this guy because i don't know who he is <laughs> so and maybe maybe watching it because again i i have to um mm -hmm. to to have whatever context it, it may yeah. provide in the future um maybe i'll care after the fact but right now going into it it's a mm -hmm. chore to watch it i don't care <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm i'm very yeah it, it truly could go either way is the thing and so like that's the thing is like trailers are hard because the people that edit them are very good at knowing how to make it, things look interesting because they only have like you know two minutes of runtime to end up working with in the end so they can pick interesting things and make them you know clip stuff together to where it's like oh he's saying that to this person and it's not and it's way more boring that he's saying it to the person that he's actually saying it to and this other person's face it mm. isn't related to it and that's boring too um so for what it's worth i like i am kind of excited about this one but also perfectly you know fine to be disappointed or whatever so Justin we'll see. said was i the only one genuinely interested in hawkeye for hawkeye i i don't know i i just know that even before hawkeye i didn't care about hawkeye <laughs> like I yeah don't care about I, him at all <laughs> i care about him more now i i as maybe as also as a dad or uh -huh. whatever like by the end of it i i like that he's like more gruff or what and like i don't know hardened by things and a little bit surly like part of me expected him to be a little bit more um i don't know self-involved or something well, yeah, you know i just don't, i don't care about him yeah i don't i, <laughs> I don't know what to prior tell to me. this yeah i, I <laughs> just didn't care about him one way i i think i've said this before on a podcast episode um the and it is funny because i do like bows but i don't <laughs> like super like high-tech bow kind of stuff i like like legless bows um i like kate kate's cool yeah. But but Clint, I don't care. I just I still don't. <laughs> so like not even like more than I thought I would. Like it's not even that. Like in retrospect, it's like, oh, I care more about Clint. I don't. I still don't care about Clint. I care more about the show Hawkeye because of Kate and because mm -hmm. of Yelena and like the other characters that are in that show. But I do not care about Clint <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I don't know. I yeah, I didn't care about him pretty much before i mean justin said yeah he was the only redeeming part of age of ultron i don't remember that much of age of ultron i think i only watched it the one time i guess mm -hmm. and it was at a time when i was like i guess i'm gonna watch the marvel movies when they come out um but wasn't like keeping up with it in much of a way at all mm -hmm. um or like thinking about it that much yes yeah. so i mean that might be part of why i don't care about clint because like I watched Age of Ultron in retrospect, and that was like one of those movies mm -hmm. that I watched because I had to, <laughs> you know. <Homework. laughs> um, yeah. Like, so I didn't come out of that caring more or less about characters that I already cared more or less about, you know. Mm -hmm. um, 
the closest that it got to with that where I was watching movies sort of in retrospect I saw Civil War but like when it was in theaters but it was mm-hmm. like that was the movie that I was like oh okay I care now because I yeah. knew Spider-Man was going to be in it and I already cared about Spider-Man and there's Black mm-hmm. Panther and I wanted to like I didn't know that much about Black Panther but I wanted mm-hmm. to know about Black Panther. yeah yeah um so I watched it for those things and that got me in you know yeah um no, Civil War was good that was a fun time I do remember being kind of like it was interesting because that came post that was after Avengers Age of Ultron, right? Or just after Avengers one before Age of Ultron? No, no, no. It was after Age of Ultron because Sokovia. Yeah, it was after. It was after. Um I, bleh, bleh, bleh. I thought it was funny that it was like we just had an Avengers movie and now we're just pretty much having an Avengers yeah, just movie again. <laughs> but that's that's like what it is now. Like that's what yeah. just happened. Yeah, yeah. Like I saw people talking about the Batman movie being like two hours and however many minutes. And I'm like, that's just superhero mm-hmm. movies now. All of them got to be five <laughs> hours long. Yep. <laughs> so I'm like, And it's unfortunate because like when there's movies that I don't care about, like mm-hmm. the Eternals, it's homework. <laughs> like yeah. I'm still, I'm watching or I'm attempting to watch the Eternals like half an hour at a time. I'm still <laughs> half an hour in. <laughs> so like I have not gone back to finish oh, that movie. Yeah. I, oh, I would... I think for that movie specifically, I would not advise that because I don't know that many of the half hour segments on their own feel very rewarding at all, even in comparison to like, it would feel more rewarding to just, just plan out an evening and be like, oh, well, I sit down don't and watch know if I will feel rewarded, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like just shiny hunt while you're watching it, like, you know, kind of do both at the same time, like to get it by osmosis but not, <laughs> not I'll, I'll retain like just as much as I would if I did it 30 minutes at a time. Yeah, I mean, I, if you're going to keep doing I mean, you know, whichever way you want to do it, 100%. I'll never watch it. Yeah. The turtle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, man, I did. I thought it was, I thought there were like a couple of redeeming qualities of it, but for the most part, it was like, man, this could have been so much more. And then it just wasn't. Um, yeah. Um, uh, Justin said, I don't know, maybe I took it a little more personal as the old man here. The opening scene of him losing his family is probably uh, the hardest a Marvel film has ever hit me. Um, I mean, that's probably part of it that it's like Hawkeye is pretty different for me mm-hmm. <laughs> as a person and uh, like a lot of his values and like all that stuff, you know? So it's like, I like, I don't identify with him. Mm hmm in that way you know like the, the i i get like some of yeah. the like fatherhood stuff because i do have nieces that like i am like that figure in their lives yeah um but like a lot of it is also contextualized by you know him being clint bishop yeah bishop, or what is it Parton? clint barton uh-huh. <laughs> um and i'm i'm not a clint barton i think for what it's worth to in in the Hawkeye show, I definitely felt more um, like I could relate to some of the circumstances, situations, and like uh, the fatherhood kinds of things in some of the bits where like there's the part where he's talking on the phone um, and he can't hear his son. And so Kate's having to write down whatever, like that, that got me for sure. Um, but more often than not, in Marvel things especially, I don't get very emotional about any of it because there's such a distance of yeah. like knowing that there's a machine behind the whole thing mm-hmm. of like you know just boardrooms thinking about the next steps of blah 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 to where like i i'm in it for the long haul and for the overall things but like i i'm not very emotionally attached to most of the characters mm-hmm. um it's not like an intimate story whereas like there's definitely movie, i mean if, if for the people who have seen this, like I remember when I was 15 and watched Bridge to Terabithia, and goodness gracious, <laughs> that movie for no good reason is just like, hey, you want to cry for forever? Um, and then it sure did it. But like, so there, there's movies think, for sure. So for me, make you cry, but, I yeah. think I agree with that, but there are characters within it that I do care about in that. Mm-hmm, way. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that, like what Mark just said, I think that that is probably why. <laughs> Like yeah. a lot of the characters that had emotional moments in Endgame never really had an emotional moment. So yeah. it's like those characters that the people at large care about mm. <laughs> didn't get hit like that until Endgame. Yeah. And then it was you like, oh, what? shoot. <laughs> you know, like. And I'll also say this I think the, it, 
the emotional moments for me, um, characters dying out in Marvel stuff that I don't think ever is going to particularly hit me, like including in Endgame or whatever. Mm-hmm. But it's the like the real kind of moments that are like I, I don't know how to say because like the it, one of those feels like a decision and another one feels like a a writing thing mm-hmm. and feels like you know empathy or whatever where like mm-hmm. if it's like and okay here's the 20 people that are gonna die in end game right i it it feels so like storyboarded you know mm-hmm. to me in terms of like i know they're gonna come back i'm not too worried about that or whatever as opposed to totally the like down to earth things where somebody feels um you know like i can imagine in in black panther specifically that like the some of the interpersonal stuff would feel really weighty because it's like you know i don't know certain things like that. I could just mm-hmm. imagine, um, I'd have to go back and think about them. Like what things quite did that? Or like even the, you know, what if, what is grief, if not love persevering kinds mm-hmm. of things like those. Yeah. That's just like moments between people that's similar to moments I would have with another person. With, and that, yeah. Right. So that's real, but yes. the, yeah. The, but like, like it, ha- it's, a, it's like it matters because it's contextualized by real life rather than yes, you caring about what is happening to these people from mm-hmm. the 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 stance of these people. Yeah, <laughs> I get that. Yeah, and it's honestly, I I think even um, the ending of No Way Home. Hopefully, spoiler alerts. No Way Home. Here we go. <laughs> um, the ending of No Way Home. I I see it through the lens of the franchise more than I do through the lens of Peter Parker. Um, oh no, me on I freaking that's part of why I'm mad about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's the thing. Like, if I if instead, which whereas like Ashley's very much the opposite, where like she can I can mention the lens of the lens of the franchise, but like she empathizes way harder just in general than I do. In like I have more of like a like intellectual empathy kind of thing. Like I am. In, in strengths finders well like i'm quite empathetic but it's more like understanding how somebody would feel about something rather than like just straight up feeling it with them mm-hmm. um and which is good and comes in very very handy Isn't but that sympathy i feel like that's sympathy kind of it's so it's like within empathy there's four different kinds or something or whatever and like mm-hmm. two of them are one kind or whatever blah blah, blah i don't know um but it's yeah, like, I could, it's like if it was a Venn diagram <laughs> yes, exactly. or a gradient and it's like the top of the gradient is, is, I don't know. It doesn't matter as far as like hierarchy, but like the I top see. is sympathy. The bottom is empathy. It's like, you're somewhere. I think uh-huh. you're probably closer to sympathy than empathy in yeah. that regard. <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, I mean, it's, it is interesting. We're like, if I, if I didn't think of it, if this wasn't a, uh, like if I didn't know it was a Marvel movie, if I didn't know it was this big picture thing setting up some other things, I think I would have been way sadder about the ending because I would have felt like the devastation along with him or that kind of a thing. But that's not the case. You know, like I know that they chose to make this decision for specific reasons. Yes. And, and you that's why I'm two pronged mad. Uh-huh. I'm mad about the fact that they made those decisions in the boardroom, but I'm also mad because like, that sucks, man. Like, <laughs> Damn, let my man's be happy for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> like, damn. Uh-huh. Yeah. Man, what a time. But yeah, I mean, that's that's Marvel stuff for now. We'll see. There it is. It's a little while until the next thing comes out. Are you watching Boba Fett at all? No, absolutely not. I don't I, care. I don't um, either. I only care about, I've, I've said this and it sounds yeah. like it's a joke, but it's not a joke. I only care about Star Wars when there are laser swords involved. I don't yeah. care otherwise. I know. <laughs> I mean, pretty much me same with like, you know, super, the superheroes that have superpowers are just going to be more mm. fun than the superheroes that don't have superpowers. Um, and, the, you know, I, maybe my mind will change more on that as we keep watching Daredevil. And it seems it's a, it seems like a really good show. Um, but uh, yeah, just in general, when there's superpowers and like big light shows and stuff like that, like they, they hit my brain in a certain way that I like, <laughs> but like, I appreciated Rogue One a lot for interesting things that it did, but it, it wasn't as fun in a different kind of way than some of the other Star Wars things. Cause yeah, no lightsabers. Mm-hmm. That's a thing. I feel you. But that's and the show that. everybody. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. If you watched and didn't, I mean, if you watched, you listened. 
you you did that in either way but you should go to the podcast service of your choice anyway and download subscribe because it helps the show um and rate because that also helps the show if you Mm -hmm. listen but didn't watch maybe go to youtube and hit the subscribe button and click like and leave a comment and let us know, freaking what Spider Man? What Spider Man? What superhero movie did you cry at? <laughs> oh, that's one a good one. Did you, uh, you know, who do you not care about? <laughs> you know, <laughs> who's your Clint Barton? There you go. Let me know in the comments. Um, mm-hmm. Do all the YouTube things. Follow on Twitter and whatnot. Join the Discord. Link in the description. Uh, goodbye. Eat some sushi. Bye. Also that, you know, maybe some ramen. Yeah. Or waffles. Goodbye. Bye.